Conservation Commission is now open and it's being recorded for RCTV. It's live, yes. Comcast Channel 22 or Verizon Channel 33. Videographer for tonight's meeting is Rob and you can check www.rctv.org for more information and for replay times. Um, the first item on the agenda is uh, Notice of Intent 270, uh, I guess we don't have a number yet, 26 Mile Post Road, Map 7, Plot 92, Dimeo. And um, did you folks sign in in the back? No. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll read the, uh, the script. And the, uh, it's now open for this notice of intent is being con conducted concurrently under the authority of the Mass Wetlands Protection Act. Um, Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended in the Reading General Bylaw, Section 7.1. <coughs> Applicant will present the proposal. Commission will receive reports from administrator, tech advisors, other town departments. Commission will address questions and comments to the applicant, and the public will be given the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant. Um, I'm going to introduce uh, members of the commission, starting on my right. Bob Hayes. David Panette. Anika Scanlon, Vice Chair. Rebecca Long, Chair. Michael Flynn. Chuck Tironi, Conservation Administrator. Okay. Uh, my name is Jack Sullivan, owner of the Sullivan Engineer Group, and I'm here with the property owner, Jesse DeMeo. And currently, there's an active order of conditions on this property. Um, a little over a year ago, they came before you. They received an order for, in addition to the rear of the house and a deck. Um, now that that's all built, it was built according to plan, um, and what they'd like to pursue now is a pool, um, an in-ground pool. They have very limited room, not only from a conservation standpoint, but from a zoning standpoint. Um, under zoning, you have to be at least 10 feet from the principal structure or a deck and 10 feet from the lot line, uh, uh, five feet from the lot line on the side, 10 feet, so you can see we're 10 feet from the structure here, 10 feet here. We basically did a uh, free-form pool to, to, to meet the 10-foot setback everywhere, the five on the side. And they're looking to construct a 344-square-foot in-ground pool. There'd be a retaining wall on the, on the low side of the pool. It'd be about, uh, it's less than four feet high. Um, it's a landscaped wall, but it would be right at the 25-foot buffer zone. Um, as we all know, the town has a local bylaw that requires all structures to be 35 feet away. Um, in this case, um, where the wetland line is now, you can see the tree line. In the, in the area that's closest to the pool, there's grass right to the wetland line. Where the tree line is, it's grassed and, and there's a slope here. Um, there's no existing vegetation, there's no trees, it's, it's just grass, there's no shrubs, there's no natural buffer. Um, and you can see there's a pretty good slope. There's a uh, contour of 94 here, 90 at the wetlands, so it's a good slope. Uh, so we know we have a high threshold to overcome with the commission. I, as I discussed with Jesse, probably in 20 years I've received relief twice inside the 35-foot buffer zone. I think in this case Jesse's open to um, a dialogue with the commission if they're if they're open to entertaining this I, as I told them it would be some sort of compromise we may not be able to build right at the 25 um, if the commission says you need to hold strictly to the 35 um, that's going to be a problem you can see you know the pool is only 344 square feet typically in Reading now most of the pools that I do are 600 square feet, so we already tried to shrink this down as much as we can. It's about 50% smaller than the typical in-ground pool going in. Um, we'd be open to, um, in addition to the plantings, if, if we had to do some sort of rain garden. Um, basically, we wanted to get before you, do an official filing, and then open it up to conversation to see what your thoughts might be on a project. I know you did do a site visit, so you're probably familiar to, to what I'm talking about here. Um, I should note that Jesse's lived in the house almost 16 years. Um, this shed that right now is within the 25-foot buffer, he had received a permit about 10 years ago. Conservation had signed off on it um, to put the shed in place. Um, so. 
maybe the wetland lines moved or maybe at that time it wasn't as accurate um, but that shed is something we, we we could pull out of the 25 or remove completely from the site if the Commission would work with us on um, extending into the 35 foot no structure zone I have a question yeah. is, to actually suggest, does your backyard have a flood with water does that grass ever get wet or yeah. it rains or and, and we do have one, a letter of support from a direct abutter. <coughs> Jesse lives at 26 mile post. This abutter is at 32 mile post. I'll just submit it to check, but it's basically a letter of support for the project. Jack, just so I'm clear, the deck was the most content that was being, that, that's already open and, and being formed. The patio and the in-ground pool and then the dry well, right? right. These, so the dry well is being added to replace the impervious area for the pool and for the patio. The dry well was included with the with the addition. So it was okay. Right. So what, <coughs> on the on the previous ap approval, it was the two-story addition in the deck and the dry well. And the dry well, okay. And which uh, and so that dry well was to collect the roof runoff. So. Um, the, the drywall has not been put in yet. That that's an outstanding item. Previ previously, on, on the previous plan, the drywall was in the area where the pool was going. Okay. So th that that's a that's a loose end on the existing order. Um, it's it still would need to be put in um, to capture the roof. So that's not any sort of mitigation for the pool. The plantings would be mitigation, or as I discussed with Jesse, we could do like a rain garden with plantings. Um, can't think of too much else we can do for mitigation. It's tight. It's it's very tight. We took a Chuck and I took a site visit on Monday, um, and Chuck, are you going to look at the I guess the all plans or the order conditions? Yeah, I did. I I uh, actually printed up the old. Got them ready to look at. We, we noticed that the area um, where the pool would be going in was very, very flat, and there was no grass, at, and it was all you know dirt, and then it went down very, very steep. Steep. <coughs> was that was that grading part of the uh, original um, uh, notice of intent for the addition? Jack, are you talking about in this area here? Yes. Yeah. They may have leveled it out. This was the access way to get back. They may have had to level for equipment, maybe a little bit, but it wasn't. I don't think it was the pronounced. Got stuck. They could answer. The owners could answer better than I do. I don't know what took place during construction, but that was would that be my guess. In December, and like like Jack said, they used the right side of the house, and uh -huh. they had to throw, and trucks were just getting stuck in the mud. Probably where it was all grass loam and the weight of the trucks coming back, c cement trucks or yep. excavators, mm -hmm. they probably had to put down some sort of material to stabilize. They tried the plywood. And so, so there was some grading notice, and you know it's obviously not shown on the plan that we approved, and it's not on your new plan, okay. but it is different out there. So. Cool. Um, it is on the new plan, right? I mean, no, it's not this '96. That's kind of. I didn't do a grading as built. Okay. It's it's straight across to the shed. Oh, okay. From here, so it's basically flat. To a, so this to a big drop. The '96 was essentially taken out. Yeah, almost all the way out to, to the, the 25 foot. Plant. Okay. So we did observe. <coughs> um, Everything right down to the, the uh, what's shown as the um, limit of the uh, canopy, where there's the wetland. It is grass, and if you look at the homes on either side, it's the same thing. I think. Did you go out? I didn't. I didn't previously get a chance. when they did the addition. Um, it's near Al Coulier's house. I'm I'm familiar with the neighborhood. Unfortunately, I. I don't have a recollection of that. But. And Dave t took a look at it the other day. As well. I saw it Tuesday. Um, 
and I, did, I didn't go down the slope because I had my crutches. But I, uh, when I, I looked at the at the at the 25 foot line, um, and I didn't couldn't see any any wetland flags in the edge. But it, maybe it's a down slope. It, it's it's kind of it looks like an awful long way to me from where the 25 foot line is. It looks f much further than 25 feet to the edge of the woods from where it's, that dotted line is shown on the plan. But uh, and there is a, a pretty substantial drop off from the, the backyard out to the edge of the wetland area. So how much earth disturbance are we talking about? Sort of talk me through that. So it's uh, the, For this it's disturbed from the proposed patio. Well, it's actually disturbed from where it says 16.4 feet, which would be the new addition of the house. Going forward to the edge of the pool, and then it and it's pretty much disturbed all the way down the slope. So the grass is re our grass has established itself or was always there. I'm going to say the grass was there at the base <coughs> of the slope, but the slope and going back towards the house has been worked on through regrading and yeah. the, you know. Is there not the mulch, did, was there not a line of work in mulch sock on the 25 foot? I mean, some. You mean from the previous build? Yeah. Did you guys see that out there? I'm sorry. What? Could you tell where the 25 foot line was where from we, the hay bale line? We saw that the mulch shock had been taken away because on the side of the house there's this there's this uh, dead grass area, and um, but it's not shown where the grading had been done, so that was removed. Okay. Oh, well, just from the oh, go ahead, Aniki. No, go ahead. You're, you're talking. Just from the pool standpoint, I mean. I've seen this commission here work to try to get above ground pools out of the 35 foot zone. Um, it, I don't think I've, I've ever, since I've been on the commission, seen an in ground inside that zone. I think we've, we've generally worked to get people out of it. Um, I don't know that that's. When I think about the 35 foot, the, between the 25 and 35, and it's, I think it's in the bylaw. It is really to protect the, the root, the root zone of, you know, shrubs and mature trees. Because if you start just, you know, going in that 10 feet, you're going to be cutting that. In this case, this grass, and there's no... Mm -hmm. So that that's one of the things that kind of sticks out with me. And, <sighs> And, and we were talking about, Chuck and I were talking about, you know, if they're going to put this in, you know, are we setting a press? You know, we, we have the precedent where we haven't been allowing structures. Yes, this is a structure, whether it's above ground. It be more intrusive if it were, you know, in ground because they have to dig out. But, but still, you know, uh, I don't know. But if, if something were to take in that area, we would want it to, to grow. I, I guess... Whether it's grass or not, we we want to have that nice buffer if something were to grow, right? I, well, they are proposing some things like um, they've got a proposed planting legend that I didn't even pick up on when I was looking at this. Um, so they are putting things uh, in uh, an area adjacent to the wetland at the kind of the base of the hill. Um, but I would also propose, you know. If we were talking about mitigation, get mitigation, I would go right up to the 35, the, 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 the 25, 25, yes, the 25, and put in, in vegetation on that um, slope to, to actually kind of anchor Stabilize. that area, and hopefully, you know, the root systems would, you know, cut down on some of the any erosion. Did we see some erosion, Chuck, a little bit? Um. What we did. He's been so many sites. I'm not sure. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't really uh, see any erosion on 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 the downslope, the, the crown of the site. There, I did see it off on the side. Yeah, that's on the side of the, the 
uh, where the equipment was coming in and out. Okay. Um, you know, one of the things that, uh, just to throw up my thought on this, is that, you know, this was grass prior to them putting in the addition, uh, and it's grass all the way down the slope. And, you know, to, this is, you know, outside the 30, between the 25 and 35 is far less than 500 square feet. Um, you know, and, and it'd be able to make a tremendous replication in this area if you, if, I know we have people put granite bounds on the 25-foot the line, but if, just kind of follow my train of thought, if, if you put a, there is a, a boundary that they're proposing here, the timber landscape retaining wall um, around the pool, but if you took the 25-foot line and carried the 25-foot line from the shed all the way to the, to the property line, and kind of made that the, the definitive line in the sand um, as the 25 foot line not to go anywhere past that ever again and to convert everything from the 25 foot line down that entire slope to the edge, full edge of the wetland and then make a replication area in that space to include trees and bushes and perhaps some of that you know wetland flower and and seed mixture, then then that's making that area that now is currently lawn a much more vibrant wetland area and in that zone of natural vegetation. It is pretty flat. Yes, in, down the in bottom. That area. So yep. I'm sure that the, there'd be a lot of um, a colonization right. from the wetland itself right. into that area. And I, I would, I think that's a great idea. I'd only add to it. I would, I would move it not. Not on the 25. I'm move it back just a skosh, just just a little room there. Yeah. Just I think the plantings there, a, a skosh kind of builds in. Yeah. Well, that's my point. It's gonna you put it there. It's gonna get pretty soon. It's gonna be six feet in diameter. Well, I was talking the trees like down the bottom of the slope, not the top of the slope, and more of the bushes and plantings up closer towards. I'm just thinking like I know it it goes up slope there somewhat. But to take like a versa block wall going from the shed up to the, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, going across there. And then taking everything from the 25 foot line and, and making that, you know, never to go, never to mow, never to impinge upon ever again on that lot. Um, that, was, that was my thought as I looked at this. So you're thinking like compensation area Correct. in that, and now that's the, essentially the wetland line. Right. And the line is what it is, and some, you know, again, you, you, somebody came before us and or in some other commission in the future, I mean, the line's going to be where it is at that point, and right. you're not going to be able to build anyways. Right. So essentially that's a compensation. That's some kind of, I'm just thinking, you know, well, there's a block, a stone wall or something like that, that would be other than just the granite markers, it would be kind of a permanent line of demarcation that would carry with the property and the deed. So I just want to chime in. I, I agree with uh, Ms. Longley and, and Mr. Hayes and Mr. Panette. Um, I, I do see one alternative, um, although it's not proposed. Um, I'm sure there are other ways to handle this, but if if you wanted to instead do a temporary above ground pool um, or an above ground pool of some design then we're not um, although I don't know what amount of grading would need to be added to make it level for a pool to be above ground um, I see that as you know if you want a pool there's another alternative and I don't know how the other commission members consider that, whether that's agreeable or, or have any comments on that. I guess I would, uh, I would defer to the owner's preferences on that one. Yeah. Well, it I, is. It, it's ultimately up to the owner to I would decide. defer to what the, the property owners would like to do with the property, I guess, whether you want in-ground or above-ground. Um, for those folks who just came in, could you please sign it? Sign it. Thank you. 
addressing. Right what, so I'm happy to address it. Um, so we did talk about it. We did think about it. <coughs> based on the way the yard is, the grading is, and quite frankly, it's aesthetics, right? I mean, the neighborhood, whoever has a pool, they're all in-ground pools. Quite frankly, I'm sure our neighbors would rather peek at an in-ground, I just think aesthetically for the neighborhood, an in-ground just looks better and it goes with every other pool that is in the neighborhood. No one has an above ground and I definitely don't want to be the first one to put one in. I don't think they'd appreciate it, to be quite honest. others agree with Dave's kind of compensation idea? I mean, I'm not totally opposed to it. Is there? Well, I, I think, you know, additional habitat is always a benefit. Um, one of the kind of practical concerns would be, you know, is that planting, whatever planting a plan happens, is that going to be something that's um, compatible with the pool and how that functions? You know, because sometimes we see people who, um, who will plant some taller plants like trees and ultimately somebody says, wait, it's leaning towards my pool. I got to take that down. So it's blocking where I suntan. It's block mm. Well, and it's, I mean, if I had a pool, I'd want the sun on it yeah. most of the time. Yeah. I, those so, are shrubs. Those are not. And I know those are shrubs, and I don't know. I, I, just, would, I can't um, remember if they're t if they're really tall growing no, my shrubs. Mind's not or, right um, and it would be many oh, years oh. before you ever had it's trees true. that would be good because it it really is. There's a very precipitous drop off here, down to the bottom of the slope. I would so. also like to see some trees back there. You can put in some divvy divvy trees that have that. They all, they all lean to one side. You need a, lo a strong wind all the time. <laughs> so, so you know, um, if this is a notice of intent, so you know the additional planting plan would be one of the um, compensations proposed in a variance mm -hmm. from our thirty-five foot setback. Right. Right. So that would be the vehicle to. And you also mentioned, you and folks the, also the shed request. Removal. The shed removal. What about the shed, too? Yeah, it's you, pre existing. I uh, if you would like to remove that, that would even be to. better. Because it, you know. There's a possibility you could take that and actually swing that. Turn the shed this way and bring it up towards the house. If you um, want to. Because it's, yeah. is it five feet, Jack? Is a side setback for On a shed, shed five. Five. So you have 16 feet there. Um, so we may be able to actually just take that and move. Well, yeah, she's I taking a head dog. Neighbors. I'm just saying that. No, I appreciate it. I just wouldn't do that to the neighbors. I don't think okay. they want to look at the back of my shed. I'm okay. okay with that. Yeah, with it not being there. All right. Yeah. So I'm sorry, Anika and Becky, are, are you proposing just planting back there or something more like? David's talking about, which is like uh, essentially a cut in making a wetland closer to the pool area. I didn't understand that from what well, David it said. It says here on this note, it says enhancement planting areas to have top six inches of material removed and replace the six inches of loam, high in organic content and free of stone. Uh, Much should be applied directly on the root zone of the shrubs. So they're going to actually um, replace that with high organic planting material anyway. Yeah. So if they're going to do that, they can be able to cast that seed mix in so, there, so wetland seed mix, pretty well, easily. But Mike brings a good point. That's not with the intent of having the wetland migrate closer to the 25 foot that exists, because that'll just move the 25 foot, right? We don't want to move the. We don't want to expand the boundary of what's considered the wetland line. We were going to look to keep the same grades that are there now. We were just going to strip the top six inches put down six inches of new right. organic material, then do the wildflower mix, right. and then scatter the plant. So mm -hmm. we, we wouldn't be extending the wetland out right. to the 25-foot line. The wetland line would stay where the wetland line is. Right. But then we'd re, re, re you know, we'd put, we'd reestablish a natural 25-foot buffer. Right. Through the plantings. But what would happen is, is that you would be basically carrying from the wetland line now up to the BVW, you would be replicating that into a zone of natural vegetation because it's all grass there now. 
So you'd be converting that from grass to a zone of natural vegetation once it grew in. That's right. Okay, so I misunderstood. I misunderstood that. Oh, okay. Uh, Um, I just want a uh, quick question. So about the 500 gallon dry well, so that was part of the previous mm -hmm. notice of intent. So it's just continued on here because it wasn't installed. Because it wasn't installed. Okay. Okay. So it would be open if I moved the shed. Could I put that in that corner there? Which corner where? Where the shed where is. Shed. With the dry well? Yeah. Um, I don't prefer... You'd rather it be upland a little as much as possible. Yes. Yeah. Might as well. It's two to three feet deep. Well, I think just from a functionality standpoint. Yes. Uh -huh. Why? Three and a half feet deep. That's the top of that uh, hilly area. It's not as high as the 92 or the 96 contour, but it's it's it was only like eight inches lower from one side of the shed to the other. So you're, okay. Well, I think you're talking about eight inches of difference. I'm just. So you, okay. remember, it's all flat up there. It's pretty much the 96 contour. Mm, yeah. But you, well, okay. I don't. I don't see a really big difference between where it is right now versus the shed location. I don't either. But, um, it's a pretty high capacity. Try well. I, you won't see it. It's in the ground. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if water tables. I actually know how big they. No, <laughs> gallons would be. No, but I often. I mean, I think crazy things anyway, but. It if would, water it, tables it, at 89, it it's going to be, be kind of ominous. It's going to be above, above it, ground. no matter what. Wouldn't point be right. <laughs> I just didn't know how big the the actual. Twenty six by four, Jack. And they're like five by eight, and then they're like three feet tall. Yeah, three to four feet yeah. tall. So Mike brings up a good point. You don't want to. You really don't want it to go inside the 25. If we, we want some separation of the water table, you'd have the option of, of moving it over here more, yeah. the drywall. <laughs> but they've, we'd want to keep it out of the 25. So. And that setback's five feet too. No. 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 Okay. So you want to take out the 500 gallon. Dry well and put in a 344 square foot dry well, right? Chuck, <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have any comments? No. Um, I think that is pretty much covered. Okay. I would, I would say that we're not ready to close though because right. we don't yeah. have an official variance. I'm would ask the commission, actually I guess I have a comment, I, I was asked the commission if they're okay with the planting plan or if that needs, so what I'm seeing is a basic planting plan now that um, the applicant knows that he's going to lose a lot of the slope in the back, maybe they want to do a better plan so they can have like a garden, they can have a path or they could do other things down there so it's not isolated for eternity. So maybe they want to have a landscape architect and look at that area now that we're saying it has to be planted. I'm not sure. But there's not much there that... Um, the whole 25 foot. So can, can I just... Because I don't know that I... Like, and then I want to make sure that we're not overcrowding. So I would like some professional to look at it, your mm -hmm. final plan, to make sure everything works. So so that's where, would the, where would the planting be from? I guess I, I'm not clear what we're asking. The... Do you have a, a... The last I heard, Bob said from just a little bit in back of the pool, right. down the slope, was added to what's already there. Okay, so it would go all the way to the 25-foot zone. That would be... Right. It would yeah. be, be just... fully contained in the 25-foot zone, right. down somewhere near the tree line, or over the grass tops. So that, that area is some kind of planting arrangement. So I, I just want to get I just consistency from the, the commission. We all okay with the wetland seed mix and the, the shrubbery or <coughs> do we want wetland seed mix, shrubbery and trees? We're going to do trees at, 
I'd have them down at the at, at the, the bottom of the slope. The well, the slope. Yeah. That's that's exactly what I was saying. To get the professional. We have proved yeah. at Randall Road that with this commission is not good at deciding what plans to put in a spot, and we're right. overcrowding. So I said, come up with a plan right. and present it to us, but have a professional. You know, verify that this the spacing is correct, so we can just say, oh, that's great. You know, it sounds this very is what reasonable. We yeah. Nope. So. Can trees fit there? I'm not sure at this point. So, I mean, there's a lot of trees there now. It's kind of wet. Yeah. Oh, right no. plants chose. And you had low bush blueberry, and when we when I walked down there, my feet were yeah, so. almost wet, and they're not. That's not going to work. I could have Norse Environmental do up a planting plan for the homeowner. That, that would be ex someone Norse or someone that would be acceptable. Like a a wetland scientist, botanist type. Can I, can I just ask a question? Uh, so uh, I'm just sort of looking at the orientation of the proposed pool and the proposed patio. And the patio meets the pool in one small curved corner of the, the patio meets the pool in one small corner. Yep. Is what's gonna happen in that space that's sort of close to the the two 10 foot um, this area here yeah both of them that 10 foot and the one kind of on the pieces. other side is this where your steps are Jesse going into the pool Correct, yeah. so we have the patio going up there's steps here going into the pool over here what were you looking for vegetation grass so is that going to be kind of level with I'm just trying to get a sense of when I'm standing on the patio and I'm looking at the pool at those steps, what's to my right, what's to my left? It, it'd be level. It'd it be would, level, it would and it would be, be like grass. Be level, yeah. yeah. So see back, the, the, the existing grade, which this is an existing grade, 96.6. So here's the 96, here's the 96. It's relatively flat in this area. So it'd just be, so I, I guess just functionally, asking why why wouldn't you just um, expand the patio it's a thought I just didn't know what we could we could have been do you know because I'm, I'm just thinking so I'm, I'm just asking the question because if we're gonna go through this process let's let's get into sure. all the little bits of it and um, I take the patio to the curve at the 25 um, okay. Oh, well, what do you think you what do you think you need for that pool? Do you need patio, um, you know, to the right side, right, right they'd, there? It'd be more open need... to ex, ex, probably expanding this way. That's right. Right. So, um, and then if there's grass on the more downhill towards the wetland side of that page up from the patio, right, right there. I don't know if there would be some landscape planting of your own just right. there to, I don't know, I'm just, I'm asking. Yeah, I think we initially thought, um, and we went to see what was allowed, but if we were to expand the patio at the top, kind of closer to the house here, we do would you mind, Do you mind getting up and yeah. sort of pointing or yeah. taking us? Yeah, just yeah. push this. Just so that we know exactly where you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, we would expand it here right yep. if we are, are allowed and then maybe a little bit here just so because it's going to be a fence right so we'd have to to get out and then i i don't we wouldn't we wouldn't have any plans to put a patio here i think plantings here would be great it would be fine even just for privacy oh okay. we don't need a huge patio because you know we already have here in the deck here so if we right. would expand it it would just be a little bit here and maybe a little bit here just to have a fence there mm -hmm. a gate again that's that's your prerogative to expand the patio or not. I mean, okay. That's, that's entirely up to you. It's, yep. I mean, if, but if that's something you were considering doing, then now's the time to, okay. to add it. To it yeah. Right. So, so you say I if mean, it would depend on price, to be honest. We don't have a right. full price, right? So that's why we're sure. still not sure. And depends the, on the price. And you say fence. Um, where is fencing going to be installed? We're going to have to show the fencing as well. It, ha it has to enclose the pool right. under right. the law. Yeah. So, okay. in. Um, even the pool mechanicals, they're going to tuck them under the deck, but I should show that location. Um, we have a little more work to do on the plan okay. to, get, to get it complete with the plantings, but um, we can show all that detail. Have, has this been designed by 
or, or looked at by <coughs> pool installer? Yeah, they, they actually came up with this. I met the pool company twice on site. Okay. Um, I sent them my CAD file, and that's how they came up with the shape of the pool. They they had another commitment tonight; they couldn't come. But this is this is all designed out. They have plans for this pool. Jack, how long? What's the lifespan of the timber landscape retaining wall? Because you know, future work on that retaining wall, I mean, if you eliminate that, it might be a good idea. Is it, do you have any idea how long those last? I could check. It might, it might be better for me to do like a Versalock wall or some sort of masonry type wall, like a segmental block wall. Was it I, I don't know the time. Is that what you're talking about? Pressure treated? If, if we did a pr like a pressure treated timber, I was trying to find something narrow, like a retainer, you know, some of the stone gets too wide and I, I didn't want to go inside the 25. Well, perhaps if the shed's going to be moved and you go with the, one of the suggestions that I had made to make like the Versalock block wall that goes from one side of the property line to the other side of the property line at the 25 foot line, then that would kind of replace the, the timber landscape wall as well. Whatever copens on the outside of the pool would just go from the pool to that, that, uh, that fall. One of the questions I have about what uh, Becky brought up on the, <coughs> and I don't see the knob in here, is, is that facing north, the, the top of this? Is that facing north? North is up to the right. North. So on that, the, okay, well, the northwest side of the, the deck there at the 10 foot radius, because that's, uh, between the upper radius there and then the existing proposed patio edge because that's in between the 25 and 35 foot line. If that was going to be desired to be patio with that patio, would that be something that we would request and require that that is um, uh, something that allows water to infiltrate through? Impermeable. Imperv Impervious. Impervious. Pervious. Not pervious, not impervious. So right. just throwing that out at this point, um, if that's going to be something that's going to change in the plan, that that would be something, if we're going to require that, that should be something that they know from stepping off now. Generally, we've kind of said, you know, I've, we've talked about this before, I've kind of oh. always say the same thing is right. pervious is never pervious forever. Uh, right. the, the, those papers really have limited lifespan and... Mm -hmm. and don't function for that long, you know, my, my, I mean, we're, we're talking about retaining wall now on the 25 foot line, we're talking about expanding the paper, I mean, I want to see, we're, we're already crossing the 35 foot line, I want to see as little as possible, really, um, particularly for, if we're only talking about planting as, as, as the mitigation, um, I, I want to see as little of everything as possible. Um, well, I think, I think what, we've established here and I think Jack and the applicant understand is that you know we're okay with the pool and I think that's why your drawing kind of stopped at at a certain point but it might be a good idea to you know redesign this or design it and show us everything that you're going to do and then come back and then we could discuss that I mean that's that's kind of what I'm hearing is that this whole thing was about would we be able to put in a pool it looks like that's happening. So now let's let's see what what you guys can come up with with all the uh, input you got from the commission tonight. Well, that makes and, sense. And Chuck's right on. Right on. We wanted to do an official filing. We didn't want to come in for like an informal. Right. That's not a plan. There's some more work. To David's point, you know, we're going to have to put fencing in. So the we're, they're probably going to run a fence from some point over here, right along the line, right along the 25 foot line back. There'll probably be a gate here and a gate over here. I can talk with the owners about that, but that fence line itself will also serve to, you know, they have to have it around the pool. They're not going to change that at some point. So that we could run the fence line right along the 25 foot, too. Well, you, you, you're going to gate it so they can, like, right. so that they want to put a path or something in there. And yeah. I, mean, it's, I it's probably don't see a reason. I, don't, I probably don't see a reason for a path through there, but I can talk with the owners about it. So we'll see something from uh, Norris. I'll have Norris do, yeah. do with the planting plan. Okay. Uh, so we're going to probably want some trees. 
for sure. Yeah, yeah I, I guess knowing that the commission is not good at preparing a planting plan, I, I would like to understand some guidance of what we're planning to look for for north from mitigation. I mean, we're looking for bushes in this zone and hoping we could get some larger vegetation down up in up in that that area. Yeah, because I, to be honest, I, I'm not in love with the idea that we're putting a pool past the, the 35 foot zone. I think we've I taken think taken we've things past we're that. We're struggling with that. Uh -huh. And I don't know that mitigate tree mitigation or is. Well, to what are you thinking? I mean, I mean to be honest, I, I'm not in love with the the idea of putting one past. I, I think we've sent applicants, we've made them cut pools in half because they've shown it going past. Uh, I don't know that just putting some dots on a page is going to convince me that they've provided enough mitigation. Now, uh, I know we, we've come up with ideas of bringing it this this direction. I, I'm sorry, I just, I don't see it without seeing it exactly what's going to be planted there. I, I still, I'm still not in love with it. Um, because, like I said, it's, it's something that we've sent other people packing for in the past. Why, why just because there was grass here right now, are we saying it's okay? But I think you have to take, I think, each case on an individual basis as well. This, this could be very different from another site. You know what is currently existing versus what someone else is trying to do. But so, what's different about this site? Just because there's grass to the 25 foot zone? I think grass, the downslope. Um, you know, just what is existing and it has existed over a long period of time. Um, I mean, if this was something that was, you know, densely and, and lavishly dead uh, vegetated wetlands and they were coming in and saying we want to take that all out and put a put a pool in there I think the two applications are totally different okay but so what's the vegetation that becomes acceptable because we've just said planting oh. that's what I think well, you, you take the, you well, take we're, the asking, we're asking the applicant to to get professional help in looking at this area finding out what the vegetation the existing vegetation is what would you know, survive and be compatible with the rest of it. My feeling is that the low bush <laughs> won't survive, but that's okay. Um, um, no, it's, it's not okay. We need, that's why we need the plan. And, I mean, and the wet mix would be yeah. excellent too. So we are looking for professional uh, opinion in that area. What, what is compatible with the wetland? So the, the wet mix too, and you, and you know this, you throw that out and a whole bunch of new stuff pops up that's not existing, and then the next year that dies off. And <laughs> you only get what, what stays. So to right. say wet mix is basically you're saying spend $100 on some, a small packet of seed and you're going to get you know, little continuing planting. But you know, I don't know, I think we should give a, a big picture. We should say Norris you know where we want a mitigation area that's planted and it sounds like they're they're willing to give up that whole I'm not sure it's just to correct me if I'm wrong that whole slope and lower end we want it, the planting to be substantial enough to mitigate for the pool so I, I guess to, to that point so I'm not, not in love with just that mix just sitting right in the zone here I think that's not, not that's not going to be enough so I think it's important what the, the well, mitigation is. I think that's to your concern. I think that's what we're all trying to get at is with this professional, you know, plan to put in a proper group of plants I, I, I to, will to tell satisfy you that concern. That ferns, cinnamon ferns, will colonize those areas. You sort of yeah. burn burn in my yard. It's not even in the wetland, but that is a wetland plant. And I'm sure it would would take and I've seen replications done by Mary Rimmer in Saugus that that's they, they put a lot of ferns in. Oh. This planting plan also have to survive the three year survivability yeah, as well. Absolutely it's two, two yeah. So it's usually two. You can say three, four, ten, whatever, but it's standard it's two. two. Okay. Not just in this town. And if we put, if this is what goes out there, would we put some sort of restriction on what, how that's, that area is maintained, or? Uh, 
I think that's what I meant when I said, like, if you What's, put the Versa Block wall in there, <laughs> you'd never go past yeah. there again. No maintenance, no mowing, no nothing. It stays natural. In the 25 foot line downslope to the wetland line stays natural. You know, go in and mow it up. Maintain it. Yeah, I guess that's what I don't want to. You know, ten years from now, that's that wetland mix is just God. being mowed, right? Right. Well, you'd have bounds in there. You still haven't been on the committee ten years from now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I'll be tomorrow. <laughs> you'll be doing this to your little son. Yeah. That's where you'll be tomorrow. I guarantee that. Um. Yeah. All right. So. I guess we've got a, a general concept of a planting plan we'd like Norse or some professional to come up with and that act, to act as the mitigation. Um, and, and to show the removal of the shed, also yep. the, the change in position of the um, dry, dry wall. And also the fence and the um, equipment, the pool equipment. Yeah, equipment, patio. Those things that, we, that you talked about. Yeah. And I fill out the not, variance not request. The I'm just saying, is this silly to think of moving the dry well over to where the shed is and just putting the shed on top of it, over where it's being buried? Does that do anything for us, or does that? You'd have the shed right up against that deck. Is yeah. that deck yeah, it's up No, 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 move the, no, no move, the, move, the, move the dry well over to where the shed is. Take, move the shed, put the dry well there, and put the shed on top of the dry yeah. well. Okay, sorry, yeah. I mean, the dry well is a, uh, it's there. It was supposed to be there. It was supposed to be in the, I think it was in that zone anyways in the original plans. This is just moving the dry well and it has to go in eventually. So uh, the dry well is not really a concern of mine. So I move we continue um, before we go move on. Um, we have new people in the audience. Do, does anybody have any comments? And if you do, um, please state your name and your location. And, uh, um, I move we continue the notice of intent. Second. All those in favor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Take care. for the notice of intent 270-0668 lot 424 highly drive map 34 lot 143 indeed and um Mr. Yes. would you like to um, talk about your proposal and we we looked at um the plans so uh essentially what i propose to do uh to give you a little background, there's already an NOI on this property. Um, the original NOI filled up almost the entire available area with something. You know, there was a large house, a bunch of decks, patios, pools. It was very, very elaborate. Um, that was never built for whatever reason, um, and the owners who live next door uh, have decided to sell the property um, and so when I came on the scene they said oh you can just use this plan that we have and I said no thank you because um, it you know it was very very customized anyway um, I came up with uh, a plan that seemed to work well for for what I would like to see happen there um, the house is a little bit smaller than what they had originally proposed and then all of the the space for the patios and the decks that's to be removed and just you know grassed in that area with much more substantial lawn they um, I'll just pop up 
the blue shaded region was what they had counted as, I don't know, disturbed area, I guess. The green is what I'm proposing to do. So it's essentially inside the footprint of what they had already proposed. They had planned to put the driveway on this side and wanted their pool over here for some reason. Um, <coughs> We're proposing to swap it. There's already a curb cut here. We have to move it over a little bit, but that way we can essentially use the existing curb cut. The grading works better going into a garage. Um, and, you know, we're pulling the house away from the wetlands and also bringing in the house over to this side, which there's a trail easement here. So that should push everything away from the trail easement. Uh, as much as we can. Uh, and I know that uh, there already was a planting plan uh, designed for the property and we should just be able to keep that as is. You know, this area we can just, you know, this is already nicely designed with trees along the trail so we can keep that all set. And, you know, this is largely in the, in the no disturb zone so we can just keep all that and our house will be you know, further up away from the wetland line than um, the older plan that, that uh, had already been approved. So that's, that's basically <laughs> the long and short of it. Yes. Where's your garage? Um, garage is Sorry. right here. So it's basically this block right here. So this is the new driveway in. The old house had a three-car garage they had a block here and then another garage behind it and you know a turnaround that um, after talking with the engineer he just said no we don't even need a turnaround we can just back out if we go this way so essentially this block right there is the garage I just have one question I, I know that in the, the original plan the the where the, the trail easement was, I know that that was really, it was shoehorned in there, it was really pinched in and there was some stairs that were gonna come down adjacent to the garage and mm -hmm. there was a stair and then a railing and, and that's all gone at That I point. think would be all gone. Yeah, we shouldn't need any of that. I think they were super tight right here because they yeah. were trying to, you know, they had a three car garage yeah. so I, right. the, the, I, I my understanding was from the engineer who did this plan, he said it was like trying to get this car out was really awkward. Right. So they needed they some out. sort of turnaround. Right. Exactly. So all of that is essentially no longer needed. So, yeah. uh, um, you know, we should be able to okay. do the rest of it, but I don't think we need the wall or the stairs or the railings or anything like that. Right. It should just be, you know, a, what you would expect to see in a trail easement as opposed to, you know, a real structure around it. Sure. Uh, yeah. Do you have have any issue with so a, a big part of the, that planting was trying to get it away from you know cre create separation from the trail right, over right. Uh, do you have any potential issues with the next steps coming down on that close to that easement where you know maybe somebody doesn't want how you know I, I, it's tough without having the plantings right right on this but uh right um if we needed to we could probably move the the stairs over that way if it became too tight um, you know that would be one thought or we could conceive of no that wouldn't work yeah I guess that would be the other way we could do it is just to run the deck parallel to keep it back I'm sorry run the stairs yes you come down this direction and land right yeah I don't think I would have a problem with that I'm just way. thinking to try to create a little bit more separation yeah, yeah I can you're see walking what you're up this trail and can I just switch back to the planting point? Yeah. yeah, for you guys. I just didn't want to do it no, no, underneath you. Um, it looks like a lot. So you've you have said that you're not going to change the plan at all. So all those all this that are going here yeah. would still be there. Would still be there. Right. Right. So you got to visualize that with the stairs. I think. Yeah. I think the yeah. stairs. I mean, the way they may be though, cutting more here, coming. so we may need to shift these yeah, it's, over it's, or something it's, like it's that. Maybe pretty close to. Yeah. If you um, look at it. The step almost well, sounds like right here. Usually, what you do with the with the planting plan is you know they go in last. Yeah. We have a certain number. You, you're mostly required for that number. Yep. All right. So if, you, if you're moving things in that area just so it works, 
and then that's fine as long as we come up with the same number. Right, that right. privacy is what Mike's saying. Yeah. It's like something's got to go there to kind of have that separation. Right, right. Something we're to thinking think about these, uh, these larger ones, I recall, right. certainly along here, um, were more privacy focused. I don't remember, um, I know we looked at it a little bit, we had the list uh, one day. I don't remember what these are, but you know, if, if you think it's better to run the stairs the other way, that would really it's be It's something fine to think about that just because of how much planning is going on here, because of the height, that I, I would keep in mind. I mean, overall, I, I, my personal opinion is this is a much better project than, than what was proposed before. I mean, I'm completely uh, on board for the changes that I see. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just a, it's a smaller footprint. Uh, right. you know, that other one was maximizing yeah. the entire space. I we I, I hated all, always hated how much space it was taking up. B, I think it's great that we're changing the driveway because the yeah. driveway was backing up into that into trail, trail area. There was a whole all sorts of issues creating that mm -hmm. space. Um, I, I think there's so many more positives on this. Um, and I think they had a. Correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't they have to move like a gas stub or something in order to accommodate the. I think the driveway right. over there. Oh yeah, you're right. And they had to move a big There's pine a tree, tree there and all that. Yeah. that I guess yeah. we have a tree too, but it's not as much of an issue. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it seemed to me that, you know, I guess from from what Chuck has told me that his conversation with the previous owners that they wanted the pool to be between the two houses and, and they owned that the was driving the whole development of the <laughs> the two million or one million and a half dollar house or whatever. <laughs> So I don't have that issue. So moving the driveway where I've got it to me makes more sense, and it works better for grading. Um, so yeah, it just pushes everything away from that easement. So I, I have a question. So you're proposing a minor? No. Let me just get back to the plan change. Plan change. You're, you're, plan change. you're proposing a plan minor, change, um, and. So in terms of the approved notice of intent for the previous plan, um, the only parts that are getting changed in an amended order would be the parts pertaining to the house construction. Right, that's right. So the plantings for, you know, the number, the quantity, the rough location of the plantings for the trail, and the construction of the trail is not being proposed to be changed because I saw a trail detail mm -hmm. in this, but maybe we already had that in the previous order. It was in the previous order. Um, I seem to recall something. So, about it, so. Um, sometimes when um, we have an amended order, I just want us to carefully methodically go through all the different parts of what was approved before and then make sure that when you know I, I think you know especially with a reduced footprint I, I don't see um, major for me at least major objections to going forward with your proposed project um, with some discussion of how certain things are going to work and you know like um, that back stairs um, but we're going to have to go through and just double check that order and, and make sure the new order is the fit it needs to be and it doesn't lose what what was left from the first order. Didn't, so. didn't, didn't they uh, hire um, a landscaper? Yeah. Yes, they did. No, yes, they did. And there's, so Chuck pulled up a very, pretty elaborate, it is comprehensive and, planting and plan. Yeah. I think that might need to be tweaked a bit for this one because the, you know that the, the there's now more is, space yeah the building is uh, in a different configuration um, so we'd, we'd probably want your your idea or plan about you know what what's going to happen in that new space where the building does not exist? So uh, my understanding is that is an opportunity to have some lawn, which the original house didn't have. Right. And I think uh, Mr. McGee was going to honor the planting plan with the quantity and Again, he may shift some things around. <laughs> and it, there, there's a lot packed in there. In, right. And and I think that no new plants need to be added. Um, 
and there's an opportunity to have some lawn here, and there's an opportunity to have some space for the wetland. So I, I'm not sure that we need a new planting plan. No, I don't. I'm not proposing that. I just want to know install it. Well, I just the want to know what the plan is. For basement uh, have an open out back into the backyard. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be a walkout basement. If you recall, the lot slopes back. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think essentially the back of the house. The basement of the back of the house will be a walk out into the yard. Um, and you know, the idea is to have some grass there and leave some open space and then hit the plantings, you know, as we go further. No patio, so, right no patio. No patio. At least not the <laughs> just, just that deck would be the only outdoor space and then a front porch. Because I recall, I mean, they had gone up so far to that edge, I think we had made sure that they didn't have any anything or something. walking out yeah. into that spot yeah. because. It's more practical. They were going to be walking right into the wetland, I think. Right, right, right. brings up a good point. So, go ahead. Go ahead. Like stand platform. Well, exactly. So that, I don't know if you yeah, No, no, that was going to be my, my next thought is, uh, is it, go ahead. generally somebody just likes to have something to walk on, a, a concrete apron or uh, just right outside the door. Um, we, we should just show it uh, if that's what you plan on having just because nobody wants to walk right in from the grass and nobody likes to step out. Mm -hmm. in. I mean, I guess I was just thinking some sort of crushed stone little two by two okay. thing or whatever. Yep. Um, so something like that would be fine. Okay. Because on a muddy day or something, if somebody's out back, you're gonna, you're probably gonna want it. Mm -hmm. Just a suggestion. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the the way the um, uh, minor plan changed, it's not an amended order of conditions. So we're just accepting a new plan as the final plan. Oh, okay. So we're just going to incorporate the changes and keep everything from before. Okay, um, and and has um, Mr. McGee been able to review what was before? Yeah. Yep, yep. There's a lot there, so yep. yeah. And you understand? Okay. No, I think this I this works a lot better, um, and I think that uh, we're getting a smaller right. house than, than a homeowner might propose. You know, they want to live there. I I agree. So I, I think that, but we do we do need a few things. If that's the end of the question, we would need the final plan mm -hmm. showing uh, the walkout apron, uh, the deck stairs moved, so do you, and any grading that you're going to do with this to meet up with the path and all that in that area. Okay. So, I'm not I'm not sure. Do we need grading or do we not need grading? Well, oh, that might that might be surveying that's. Not finished, really finished grade, you mean? Or existing oh. right now? Or are you just going to keep finished. the grades that are shown yeah. on this plan? I think essentially we're just going to keep the grades that are shown on the plan, yeah, because I think the uh, basement of the previous house is essentially the same as, you know, I'm sorry, the, the cellar floor grade of the old house is essentially the same as the cellar floor of the house. proposed house. So it would really be changing the current blue shaded areas to tie them into the areas outside but that's essentially going to be flat just kind of going right out yeah so, okay uh, so just uh the, the stairs and the, the walkout and you know something that doesn't have the blue mm -hmm. i think you game. have you have one that doesn't have the blue okay um but it, it doesn't doesn't show up yeah i'm the only copy so um, so anika has a full plan set over there that yeah, this yeah, nobody else got that? No. no. Oh, lucky me. <laughs> nobody got the full Did set. Did you see the plans? I got the full set. Oh. I, I, yeah, so it was a naked turn. I didn't know. Little yeah, did I know. The lottery system. Well, <laughs> I had no idea that's how it worked. <laughs> I didn't either. <laughs> So what do we need to do to move this forward? Do we have to make a motion to something? Oh, yeah, I would like a, a motion and just I'm make a motion to I make a motion to approve the minor plan change as um, as a condition that we get a final plan that includes everything Chuck just mentioned there. Yep, deck stairs, walk on I, I second that. All those in favor. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. Okay, we have, we have 
um, Meadowbrook Golf Club. Did so we ever find out? Um, there's an update on that. They're they're cool. back in at a fever pitch, and really? they should be presenting plans to my office within the next two weeks. So. Even if they bring them in next Wednesday, they can't be on the next meeting. They have to, so it doesn't matter next Wednesday or the following meeting. The following Wednesday, they're going to be on the first meeting in uh, June. June, yes. So it is, it is rolling again. I think uh, they're using the original curb cut and not changing that. So it's going to change kind of the configuration of what we're looking at. So there is going to be some differences in the plans. Um, Curb cut for the clubhouse entrance, parking lot? Yeah, they're going to use the same one that's there. Oh, there's no curbs anywhere on that street, but. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> I always what is it called? The, the, the entrance? Yeah. I just, no, no, I'm not picking on you. I just, I'm sure. remembering driving down that to the compost. I don't remember seeing any curbs. Uh, on to old new business, 306 Main Street update. So the update for 306 is that um, they needed to show some progress uh, so that they wouldn't lose um, their s one of their permits. And so they cleared off the site and they put up the erosion control. And they had Jack go out there and, and survey in the 35-foot line. So that's what you're seeing out there. So don't be surprised that nothing's going to happen for another couple of weeks or months. That's, that's where they're at. So I was I was happy because a lot of people were using that site uh, to just dump stuff. Right. And now it looks like action's happening. So I think it'll have uh, at least stay clean for a while. And the erosion control has been, you know, hey, no, that's the same, same grays where you used to be. Yep. That's three hundred six. Okay. Yeah. And the next item is Arcadia Avenue update. Yeah. I just wanted to let the commission know that the uh, developer came in and has been uh, given, granted, or received his foundation permit. So he is uh, okay to start with the building department. Um, any review from build, uh, from planning, engineering, and the conservation department at this time. Uh, we've had a couple of visitors to the office, uh, basically all on the same day, which was kind of un unusual. I think they all were kind of thinking about the same thing at the same time. But I just wanted the commission to know that, again, this is a project that's had a you know long path through all the permitting that it needed. And the uh, application for the foundation has been given out. And it's usually get done that way, foundation first, then building permit. After the foundation, we'll have a chance to review it again and issue the building permit. And between those two, Glenn and the conservation office asked for an as-built plan proving that the foundation is in the spot that it's supposed to be. And it's the elevation it needs to be. Mm -hmm. Is this, is that Arcadia up there? Yeah, sorry, I, I was talking. Is this the street, is this the house that's got insufficient Frontage on one street, but it abuts two streets, so they right. they added the other right. the other roads frontage to. Okay. It's yeah. the lot's total frontage, even though it's in two different areas. Right. And I know that a lot of. Uh, it's a, have you been out to see this? Like everything set up for. No, nothing is nothing is happening. We have um, an abutter here tonight. Direct abutter. Um, so he can give us his insight on on the project. I think he has a few questions for the commission too. So um, with uh, yeah. Yeah. So um, you know, first and foremost, uh, I don't know your first name, sir. Right here. Well, uh, um, that is a very big question. How how did the committee? or the town allow the split map to come to pass and just recently we just learned about because we've been asking about the you know 54 53.99 frontage on Ar Arcadia and the others down in uh, you know the proven that's down on Arnold uh, 
don't know the line numbers right now. But, and um, so we've been asking, you know, all of you guys to, you know, please send us the proven statement. And I stopped into, you know, um, the conservation office the other day, and you know, you explained that um, Wubin, at you know, who owns it, gave us gave the town the rights. So then you must have been able to give the rights to the owners then. No, is this a, is Woburn, this a zoning question? Woburn talk, yeah, it is a zoning question. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, then Woburn then. and Redding talked, yep. and I wasn't part of that conversation. And then the result of it is the, the permit went out. Now, the particulars about it, I absolutely do not know. Okay. But generally, I generally speaking, I don't think that I can tell you that Woburn didn't say, hey, there's a problem here. Right. And I only assume that because we've moved forward. Who's the right person to so, go Yeah, so that would be Julie Mercier. Okay, so the, yeah. one second. So I've been trying to correspond with Julie, and then what my understanding is that she's out on yes, she's which, on is, which is great. She hasn't returned the phone call. And then went to... Andrew McNichol is, uh, I think it's McNichol, right? It is. Uh, is taking Julie's spot while she's on maternity okay. leave. Um, so we can so my, my other question is mm -hmm. then, the, you know, the ZBA, we've never had any notification me. in the mail or any verbal with, with any of them there. And, you know, leaving here the last meeting, you said that they would send, you know, in my notes, you guys, and please look up yours, you said, you, you know, we'd get some type of documentation from them. And we've never got a notification from zoning board of appeals. Can yeah. can can I actually address that? Sure. Um, I, I uh, I'll let you know. This is kind of strange for me because I looked at that piece of property back in 1976 to buy that piece of property because one of the houses, two houses up from that, was owned by a, a gentleman that I used to do construction work for, and at that time wasn't buildable because it didn't have the front end. And I think uh, the gentleman's name that owned your house was, I think his name was Frank Husserick. Correct. And I was going to buy some property from him to make that lot buildable. And then it, it, the problem at that time was the, the land was intestate. It was owned by a gentleman that lived in California, and he had passed without a rope. And then I just dropped it. And when that first came up, I asked, I reached out to someone that was on the ZBA, and I asked the question as to how that was able to be built. And I was told if that had the frontage, whether it be at that, that uh, lollipop that was at the end of the street, and I'm, is that Arnold, Arnold Ave? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That because it runs contiguous, that if they did have the frontage, that it wouldn't even come before them. And that was, and that, that was before, that was before, um, anything even really transpired before we even went out and did any kind of uh, um, uh, site visit on that property. So I asked that question way back then. Now, where it went its way from there, I don't know where, that, where it went, but he basically told me that if there was frontage, whether it be on two streets, that it really didn't matter, that if there was an adequate amount of feet of frontage, that that would qualify it as being a buildable lot. So the thing is, at this point, I, and I and I don't want to make you think like we're not listening to you or cutting you off, but no, you're, you're, you're coming before the no, conservation right. commission for something that's right. really not germane to the conservation commission. No, right. What I'm trying to say is, I'm directing it. So there's a parcel of land, if you know what, if if I know it talking. very well. So good. So it stops where the fire station, uh, where the fire hydrant is. Yeah. The gray area is in the middle of the property. That was inward. That is Woburn. So there and then we've had this, you know, 15 or so uh, meetings here. So after you said, you know, the ZBA will get in touch with you. That's a ZBA question. That's a ZBA question. Fine. We've never been notified. That was the original question I had. You know, second question I had for you. Now with you. Th that has just been grandfathered in, for, as far as my understanding, because I went back to 1954 mm -hmm. on, on it. Now, Jack, I wish he stayed around, 
His line is across Arnold. The original one from 1970 is, is back another eight feet, if not further, back in that line. So if you recall back in 1970, that the line is, is, is back, and please look it up, and in you know, 2018, 2017, when he did it, it, it's in front of Arnold. So there's a lot of gray area there. And inward, so what we're asking everyone in the neighborhood, basically, is how, how does this happen that Ruben transferred the existing property to make it happen, to have one, and it actually comes up to 119, according to our maps. And you're supposed to have 120. So they're one foot short. I don't really know. I, the map that I originally had was the one that came from the uh, the Reading Assessor's map back in 1970 something, right. and that's what it had at that time. It was the same map that actually was on the plan that we had here that came before us. So I'm really not sure, but you know that the questions I think you're asking are uh, questions that really are beyond the scope of what we do here with the Conservation Commission. John, John Halsey was involved. With you guys at one point, right? He told me, yeah. Because he, he came out and when yeah. we did the DEP right. visit, yeah, he, he, was, he did. John said we should be getting notified from the ZBA. Uh -huh. And we nothing ever came. Have, have you so gone to ZBA? Huh? Have you gone to ZBA and asked them? I have. I went to engineering. I've been running around. I've, I've gone to Julie. I've left many messages for Julie. She never got back to me. I understand now what, what what's transpiring, but still, I mean, there was no notification. Of, uh, while this was going on. You know, we just learned about it the other day, and yes, I did run down to conservation, and yes, Chuck was already... So please there. clarify for me when what was going on, when the foundation construct, like the project progress, well, you mean? Was, we, you, knew, or, you know, you passed it. We got that. Right. Then we thought it was going right. to go to another committee, be it ZBA, and they were going to... And there were a lot of talks. I know that we said, well, you know what's going on with this uh, you know the, the the frontage right and that's when <laughs> it was found out that it was Woburn and I know after that that was that part is out of our was out of our hands right. I and I don't know it did we actually say oh the ZBA will tell you well, well I, I wouldn't no, to tell you that the ZBA would contact you. Um, so we don't have that authority. Yeah, don't I, have that and I don't know, and I don't know <coughs> how they uh, they post their meetings per se. So, you know, I, I don't I don't know. Mm. So it's been never it's it never seems been like it's, so, it seems like you need. And if Julie was here, I, most of the questions, from my understanding. It would be good to ask Julie. Correct. And I know she's not here, but I'm sure if you contacted Andrew um, and had these questions, I'm sure that there's some mechanism to, to get them. That's how I operate, correct? I mean, I leave you a message and you get back to me. I'm in the car all day. Yeah. Right? That's basically the, the message that Have I you tried, me. Andrew? Or? I don't know. I don't even know. I, didn't, I, you know, they okay. just, I spoke with Ryan. And Ryan told me that you have to direct everything there. He went out, saw the site, and uh, you know he he passed it, whatever you know terminology you like to say. I had a question about the you know the zone. Do they come out and you know measure it again? He said no, they don't. We you know it's Jack stamped it. That's his that's his word and so forth. And we left it at that. And then um, so I mean it was news to me that you guys are going to review it after the foundation, which is it. Which is what I asked Ryan that, you know, and I spoke with you the yes, yesterday also about the, uh, the banking. Now, it's eroding a lot. Now, I just sat here and I didn't say anything because I, I don't know enough to say anything about, but these two uh, applicants prior to this are, you know, are all on slopes. And, and I like your, your, you know, where it was, well, it's individual and I get it, but I mean, I don't see, I'd like you to review it, but I have to go back to the map, the final map that you guys signed off on. I don't see any vegetation that you you said you were going to sign off, you know, put, put on the back slope of it. Back slope of this lot? Because it's yeah. existing vegetation. There are, but not enough. 
and and you know, I mean, Rebecca, you know, said, you know, there's some ferns and stuff, but there's not there's not a whole lot. To there's hold, a large yeah. over story of trees. Are you talking about you know where it goes down? Yeah, there's not a lot of there aren't a lot of ferns. I mean, there. It's, that, it's, I, it's what I was saying with the yellow lot was the ferns would establish it, and you can buy those wetland ferns. That area that goes down, as I recall, was a pretty mature upland with pine yeah, trees. Pine trees. And, and very little um, shrub layer. You know, well, we're going to take down 50 or so trees, mm -hmm. right. not knowing which ones we're going to take down. I mean, I know they're extra, uh, extra, but you know, it's not easy for me to look at them. But you know, that's going to make a concern for you know, my neighbor, obviously. And I know you're putting a you know, dry well there and possibly a dry well. You know, to, to hold back the water, but you know, there's there's a whole lot of this concern, concern, you know, of of a lot. And then you know, you you mentioned to this gentleman here, you know, okay, yeah, the, the downsize of his of his house, yay, you know, what I mean, now we're gonna have grass and stuff. This is gonna be a big house. This is gonna be a big. Yeah. But this, this I recall. So isn't there? Uh, wasn't there a a post rail fence and then some arbovites that were going to be planted on that downslope side on the other side of the. We're looking at the plants right now. Just in regards to that last one, I mean, he was coming in with a proposal to reduce the footprint of a house. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, construction project we actually had to uh, approve because it met all the conditions. Uh, we're excited that he's proposing to do less. Yeah. Uh, he was under no requirement to do less. He just wanted to do less. So it's on the trees. It's it's great that he yeah. they proposed that. Um, I agree. Unfortunately, and, it's and, and very often, and I people that I know personally come to me and go, "Why are you letting this? Why are you letting that happen? That lot's been there forever. You should let them build on it." It's it's not us letting people or not letting people build. And the reason why there are rules and guidelines, and they're not always etched in stone, but the reason why they're there is so that emotions can't dictate what people can do with the property they own. Yep. So long as somebody's following the rules and regulations, that's pretty much, you know, all we can ask them to do. So that's all I'm asking. Yeah. yeah. And I, you know, I have I have my doubts also still, but that's that's another another segment, but. We, we never had a chance to say the dwelling, you know, we, I mean, you guys obviously, you know, we spoke about it. Okay, so we can't, we can't fight a house being built there. But now it's going to be 35 feet tall. It's going to be on a ledge. Um, we've done, we've dealt on, you know, on our, our house with Johnson Woods being, you know, built, construct, I mean, blasting, et cetera, et cetera. Inwood, which was... Arcadia, I think, uh, I forget exactly the uh, name of it, but the, the, the time before, you know, Blue Hill, I mean, excuse me, Blueberry Hill being knocked down, you know what I mean? And, you know, summers of, of on end, six years plus of blasting, you know, we, we had a, you know, talk to Reading Police, they were blasting at like 7.30, 8 o'clock at night, you know, and they, the audience, the ordinance, excuse me, was, you know, till 7, you know, we, you know, you you came out to see the pine trees. You stopped them dumping the snow over there this year. That was probably the first year that they snuck, they stopped. But you didn't know it, you know what I'm saying? No. And, you know, the, the things that we get, it's, oh, it's wounded. There's three big pines that came down, they uprooted. So if you take that, you know, canopy of, of, of woods there that's standing there, you know, what is, you know, my neighbor, what do I have from uprooting trees or anything else like that on my property? What kind of rights do I have? Is that your? Is that a question for you, or is that ZBA? The other questions we have: if they're building the homes, you know, I mentioned to you before, if they have 54 feet of frontage, and you know, if, are they going to be parking? You know, are they legally parking all these construction vehicles in front of our, our way? Who do I? Who do I see about that? Or who does my neighbor see about that? You know, we don't want to have any conflict. You know, if you put in a ranch possibly in there, which we mentioned earlier, you know, what I mean, fine. But you know, you're talking about a pool, and and you know, Mike, and you're, and, and you know, I don't know what you were thinking, but it's fine. But you were gonna say, you you know, you cut some pools in half. I mean, you know, people pay a lot of money to live in town here. People pay a lot to come to to Reading for the you know aesthetics, the schools, the 
you know, et cetera, et cetera. You guys are changing the landscape of Reading, Massachusetts. Mr. Rauchy, if I, if I can comment on that. Um, I understand and I hear your frustration with the continued development of residential houses mm -hmm. and the continued destruction of, um, of forested lots. It's happened all over Reading. It's happened on... Randall? It happened on Randall. It happened on Forest Street. Franklin. 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 Thank you, Franklin. Uh, Johnson Woods. Main it's, Street. It's only been happening mm -hmm. nonstop for the last five years, at least. Wow. At least. So... That said, unfortunately, under the purview of conservation, we don't have the authority to completely um, deny um, a house project if the house project, and it doesn't matter what kind of house, we, that's not our decision to make. That's more zoning. Um, we don't have the right to deny a, a, a private citizen to put a structure there, and we have to call it that at this point, some sort of structure there, as long as it meets the standards that and the variance requirements that we have in our laws. That said, I mean, I know that you're not the only one in town who, you know, has that opinion. I feel that way many you're times. You're not the only too. one in the room that feels. Feel you're not that the only way. one in the room who, who has that opinion. Unfortunately, I don't think. Um, until some um, law is established in Reading that restricts, st strictly restricts the cutting of trees to create a house or something, some other law, either through town meeting or through bylaw or, and whether or not the town has, and that's a whole nother yeah. kettle of fish because because you don't know if town council will even approve of that, right. even if it is the will of the t of the residents. So it's kind of a whole, I hear your concern, and I and mostly agree with what you're saying, but it would actually be illegal of us to deny a house on a lot like this, and if if they meet our requirements. And, and plus, you have to see the we're on the outskirts of urban sprawl, and that's there's almost no stopping that. And you get far enough away from Boston, or even up in New Hampshire, they started producing all these snob laws. You had to have two or three acres of land before you could build. Well, well, don't get me wrong. These, yeah. The problem with that is you just run out of places very quickly to build stuff. And thank you for you know. I, 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 I you identified I, that the last time, and you understand. You know, no, you were, I you I understand, right. um, and I hear your frustration. I but hear. Why is then, the Clarify this then, like say on an existing. Right. right. Why then different rules apply to I mean, that particular group of people? You know, the applicants. How so? Community. What well, different I mean, rules? So are they have about? a slope, they have a pool, and then they have a patio, and you, you know you. The previous applicant tonight. Yeah. And I'm just saying, and I, w I just walked in, so that's why I'm not really. I yeah. Can't um, I, there's just different things all the time. And I think that confuses everyone in town. So well, it's pretty know, much why everything's a case by case basis too, because not everything. It's not a cookie so, cutting kind of well, thing. Well, I mean, going back to your, I mean, you, you have so 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 for there for for that previous permit. Yeah. The entire yard right, that that was underneath the proposed pool and the patio, the entire yard currently is a giant lawn. Okay. That's what it is right now. What they're proposing to do, yeah. well, mm -hmm. in our yeah, standpoint, right. lawn is not helpful vegetation because it does not provide habitat. Okay, it's an ornamental from it's a from a conservation it, it, from a conservation standpoint. Right. You know, it it what do you what do you do with your lawn? You fertilize it. What do you do? You put pesticides on it. What do you do with a lawn? It sucks up more water resources than is necessary. Uses up gasoline from lawnmowers. Okay, so when it comes right down to it, the ecological value of lawn is pretty poor. Okay, so when we see, 
<laughs> well, no, so aesthetically, a pool is. Well, why don't we just continue? So, <laughs> so, so, do you understand what we're saying? Yes, so, if no, so, if shall. half of that said. lawn is converted to half the the lawn, I, 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 I just, I just want to give you a little. I appreciate that. Yeah, you know, allowing me to. Can I, can I make a suggestion? Um, yes. This, Chuck, correct me if I'm wrong, but Arcadia Rav had to go to site plan review, right? And no. Julie Mercy. Well, apparently, it didn't. Is that, that's what that's what the conversation is. That's apparently, really I thought didn't. every I thought every project. No, I that think was, Sunny House not a second review. A, a bigger project, I think, goes through. Okay. Like so, uh, perhaps um, if, if from, from yeah. what I'm hearing, I I'm I mean I understand your questions. I have the same questions too, but we're just the wrong committee. Right. I I don't I think that it would be really great that you know. Too bad all the committees couldn't be in one room at one time. You could ask all the questions. But I think you're going to have to go to ZBA okay. or talk to Glenn. Or Gene um, Delios. Yeah, I would start with Andrew and then... I can just tell you from my own personal experience that I've, I've been involved with projects that ZBA has gone through. And what I would do is I would email Andrew. I would CC Gene with any concerns that you have. That way, you A, you just have a record of when you sent it and when they're, you know, that's... Mm -hmm. Going to respond. You know what's going to Andrew. You know somebody like Gene's going to end up seeing it and know if it was been responded to or not. Um, if it doesn't get responded to at that point, I would then you know you guys have already had engaged John Halsey at some point. I would then engage John Halsey. He's ultimately he's the boss. Uh, you know the the or, or any other board of selectmen. That that would be my personal recommendation. If you feel like you're not getting action. Okay. Um, and then ZBA that. does meet next week, um, okay. and they have an open time time for meeting. I, I don't think it's, you know, they might have they may have no idea what the project is about. So it. And then yeah, I know it's late, but I mean, what, what rights do we have for the trees if we do get uprooted in a year or so? Because, like, I brought that up. The new planted trees are the ones that are. Up the there. existing ones, because I mean, we brought that up when we were butters to Wuben. We went down to Wuben, and you know, they had some high-powered lawyers and all the above, and they're like, you know, they promised the, us the moon. We we had crackings, we had, you know, we had videos. They came in to, you know, is there going to be blasting? Or is that not? You you probably don't know that, you know, because who knows? I mean, yeah, you know, we. I don't expect any blasting, but it, we, we did discuss that, and I don't. I thought that they said that probably wouldn't be blasting. Somebody brought did, that question. Did they do up. test pits? No, they oh. dug an eight foot test pit, and it was all gravel. Right. So there shouldn't be any. Shouldn't be any I remember blasting. Somebody, I but, remember that being asked. But that's not a conservation problem, right? If there's blasting, and, the, and, and Redmond gives them the permit to build the house, then there's blasting. I mean, and I'm not dismissing you. I'm saying it, you know, people can't live in the trees. That's the problem. No, fine. But I'm saying, but what rights? But but if you do have damage from blasting, oh, that's a different story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you can. There is a recourse with that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. So you did. I so bounced this last time. I bounced back from Reading to Wuben back to back. Uh, yeah. You know, I don't have. I, you know, I mean. When Johnson Woods went yeah. in, yeah. did they blast? Oh yeah. No. Now that was Reading. Oh yeah. And that used to be that old farm. Correct. Um, did you get cracks in your, and did you go, and nothing happened? Mm. Did anybody inspect? Before and after? And we have pictures, and we have all the documents. And my wife's uh, repainted and re re she, thank goodness I have those meters, and if they're not, they're not registered anything that over a certain level is it's not considered a problem. So we want to do it right this time. That's what we're trying to say, you know. Yeah, and the trees, yeah, yeah. the trees are concerned. I mean, I, I, I you know, that wrong. I have some big trees that are on the outside. Where are they going with it? <laughs> so when you cut down trees, and they cut down trees across the way, and I brought that up years ago. Not on my property, but you guys will be out. You've seen some trees falling and cracking from the tops and all that stuff, and and that happened from the wind. The wind is all changed over. You know, just being there, you know, I just noticed it, but, you know, you notice it, you know, but, you know, things, things change, but well, now yeah, when you take 50 trees down. You have a good point. Yeah. I mean, we've seen that before, especially pine trees. They actually are more sheltered when they're clustered together, and opening this up, something may happen, but it, it may not also. Right. I mean, 
Is it a two-year limit? I, mean, I don't. You know, I mean, is it a one-year? The, the one thing that that is going to happen is that beyond that 35-foot zone, they're not going to be able to extend their yard. I mean, this, what they're looking at on this picture here is is pretty much everything yeah. that they're going to get, um, no matter who goes there. Now another commission could sit down in five or ten years. Mike will be here, but um, I'm not sure about the rest of them. Uh, and they could have a different opinion and they could allow something. But So those are new those are new, those are new bushes and trees on the Yeah, yeah. Okay. They're so abrovitee. Okay, yeah. So they're abrovitee and then they're showing some other uh, some other uh, What's the life expectancy of a bush? 5, 10, 20 years, 30 years? I know some trees live to be hundreds, thousands of years old. I'm just wondering if there's a... It has to do with the species and all that, but... Mm. It can be decades. I mean, yeah. but, I mean they seem pretty hardy. They, they tend to hang around they, a long time, right? Yeah. They have seeds and they... They establish past the first two years that you have a great chance of living many, many, many years. Um, I just wanted to bring up just one three more minutes, point that's a long time. that the neighbors did appeal this order of conditions, the commission, Conserva Reading Conservation Commission right. issued the order, that order was appealed by the neighbors and then the superseding order was um, issued by DEP after a relatively right. quick right, site right. walk where they upheld our decision. So for all the things we said, it was even reviewed after that and even, even if we denied it, DEP would have approved it. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, was the, I mean, I, I felt justified that, uh, you know, when they came in and did that. I mean, that one worked out. They don't always work out. Yeah, if we had one at the same exact time that we completely disagreed with uh, DEP with what they, uh, same guy. Yeah. Mm. And uh, they, uh, they issued a superseding order. Uh, I didn't, you know, and they, uh, what's it called? They, they, uh, they slipped in their own uh, order and they vacated ours. So, um, still held under the bylaw. But yeah, it's. I, I think that it's it's going to be helpful for you to move on if you get the answers to those questions. Yeah. And you know, Julie would be great to talk to, but Andrew may know. What's going on, and if he doesn't, he has uh, he has others that he can turn to. Okay, so I can give you a Andrew's email right here. I appreciate it. So bring that. So bring the concern about the construction vehicles. I think the question. No, it's, it's a public. public road, yeah, it's a public kind of street. Road. They're going to be able to park yeah, on the public street, but um, <laughs> and we all share that. Certain people show up to do work in your neighborhood, and it's a public street. I, sometimes I can't get out of my driveway because of what's being done in my neighbor's house across the street. I don't mind. He's a great guy. And the people working there aren't going to be there much longer. But I have a tough time getting my truck out of my driveway. just have to live with it. You know, they're, they're That's considerate. That's a curve, too. So. Well, you can mention that to the, the, the police department. But I think, you know, at, at ground level, it's a public street and they could park there. So if, if something... Um, uh, you know, hi is highlighted that it is uh, dangerous and that's come to uh, fruition. I think that they would do something about it, but you know, that's as much as I know. They can park on a public street. Yeah. And now, the, the other question was the you know, so the erosion that's happened over this year, seeing that I walked through the woods there a lot. Um, on this property? Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. Appreciate that. Um, so you might want to take another view of it, you know, if, if they got the approval for the embankment here and, and the, the line is here for their foundation, you know, they might have to move that, um, you know, according to the 35 and 25. So you're saying erosion that happened as a result of the winter storms and all the damage that happened kind of... Did you have it on your property too? I did not, no. Oh. I just had some trees, you know, some linden. Trees, yeah. Yeah, yeah. trees and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah all did. No. no, the question I was talking about was the frontage question. Yeah. That's the, that's the Andrew McNichol. Right. Possible. I would send that to him. He might send you somewhere else, but... 
uh, it's not for this committee. I think that's the one that would be. Yeah, no, right. Do you know who had those conversations? Somebody had to have called Woburn. Well, from from what I know, it was it was looked at. Now, who was involved? I know Julie was involved, and I know that Dean? Ryan was involved. Oh. And I thought there was a survey done of the whole area by somebody. Yeah, and, Woburn, um, Woburn did the survey oh. a while back. I'm not sure exactly the date. Maybe like two years ago. They then turned over all the information to Reading probably like six months prior, you know, just recently. And uh, so they had the, they had the answer. So, you know, the, the bottom line is, you know, take your, take your vocabulary, but, you know, you get run around about a piece of, you know, parts of the land is, you know, as far as we can see from the maps, it's moving. Now you're saying that, uh, so who, who gave the rights? Did, did Wuben give the rights to Reading and then Reading gave the rights to... No, that's, that's, that's a legal question, there's no... Yeah. yeah or as much a political as legal question yeah, that's, as it gets. That's, I mean, we weren't part of those conversations. Of so that's UBA. Yeah. Yeah. Well, or it could have been a private... Know, private know, well, yeah, well, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know, I know who can answer the question. Study. Do you Us. <laughs> oh, can't, Us yeah. Can't. We can't, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, those, the, it's, I mean, I, I guess if I, I feel like I said, I can't only say it a couple more times. This is, I, you know, Andrew might be the first person and he would direct you. But if it comes to me, I would have just sent it to Andrew and said, Andrew, can you, can, is this something you can know. answer? I didn't even know. I mean, like, yeah. I spoke with Ryan. He said, see, Julie, and uh, he never, so, you know, never told me she was, you know, expecting or, you know. Unfortunately, the two people that could help you the most actually had, had uh, Julie had a baby on Sunday and Ryan's wife had a baby today. Okay. So they're going to be out for a little while. <laughs> it's a good thing. So yeah. I, I just want to add one little bit at the end. You're talking about erosion on the site and on, the, on that property. That's sort of, um, you know, what happens sort of like that. It's a little bit of act of God <coughs> happening. So it's not something we're going to, turn a blind eye to necessarily but um, you know it's it's I mean it's something we can look at but um, if in that healthy that the area that is not touched by the development on this lot is pretty well established right so uh, it's got it's got a sort of a habitat strength that you know if, if there is a gap if there is erosion, if there is, there's, there's a lot of seed, if there's a lot of potential seed bank in the soil, probably, for volunteers to sprout up and hopefully stabilize the bank. But, I mean, maybe during one of our, during construction site I mean, visits, we could check, know, we could just walk it and check it. We cannot stop this project. Our wish list would have been to have them donate the land, you know, all, all intents and purposes, turn into a bird sanctuary, to turn, turn into, the, the scouts, the girls. Good idea. Well, you know, would have been pride. You know, would have been pride. Yeah. A great shooting range. <laughs> well, then, you know, <laughs> that's, that's all good, you know. But what it really comes down to, now that you, you know, established everything, what rights do we have as, and we'll bring that to the ZBA, correct? Or where do I go? Tell me where I go. Uh, what, what rights so, do you want? So, yeah, what, well, what rights okay, do you so want? Down the road, say, like down the trees from Woven all are getting uprooted. You know, so those are all exposed hills and, you know. Across, the, across, across the water? The I have no rights on that. Right. That's, no. that's correct. But I do have rights, in, I hope, in my own town. So if I have, you know, a property line with trees on it, and they become uprooted because the wind changed and stuff like that. You, know, you have rights to be very tough to prove on that. your yeah. property. You have rights on your property, but but I think that's. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a lawyer, but I I do believe that's the extent. Well, if if okay, so when they're if, if, if there are issues during construction, yeah. You know, and and you see dust, and you see oh, there's more. There's a, there was a heavy rain. There was some erosion. You could speak with Chuck and also Ryan. Okay. Um, 
Yeah. I, I mean, and, and Chuck isn't going to not be out there. He has to be out there oh. at different times That's looking right. at no, Chuck's things. Been, Chuck's been, he's been great. He's explained everything and probably have asked him crazy questions in the past, but <laughs> he's been good. But, you know, the bottom line is, is that, you know, I've been fighting the erosion on that hill. So when you take the trees down, and we've talked about it, and you hit the roots and stuff, we don't know if they're weakening, you know, the roots on my property line or my neighbor's property so line. So if, if the hill keeps eroding, um, the new owner probably wouldn't want that to happen, and he would Correct. probably do something about it. But I, I would think that that's a future permit or a future project. And the same thing with the trees that fall down. We've covered our permit is limited to what you see on this plan. If something happens beyond this plan, beyond the scope of this plan, it, if it could be an act of God or it could be a new permit. So when trees blow over, that's not really something we get into. Um, people call us and say, you know, can I remove the tree that just fell down because of the storm or do I need a permit? And it's the policy of this commission to allow them to, to remove the tree. If, uh, if it's in a wetland, if it's in a wooded area, there's a habitat component to that, so it has to be looked at. But if it fell on someone's grass lawn, it, could, it can be removed. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, I have no other questions. I appreciate okay. your time. And, you know, Good luck with your other well, questions. Hopefully you get the answer on the, the frontage piece. I mean, it is an intriguing and, and different piece. So. Yeah. We'll see what happens with the next committee. All right. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. Thanks for, Thanks for coming you in. Good night. Thank you. Yep. Okay, tree cutting policy. What's the tree cutting policy? Sure. What are we thinking? So I just want to add some new information that I talked to the DPW department and the forestry department has their own tree cutting policy, which is quite, um, it's it's quite a bit more expensive than what we're offering. But I think when you when you think about the volume of trees that we have to deal with, it's it's a little bit different. So what what department? The DPW forestry department. They have their. They have a tree cutting policy. Well, who, who would take go down, to them? So, the, like policy, a developer okay. that needs to take down a tree right. to put in a driveway or put in a house, mm -hmm. that's a town tree. <clears throat> so, their, you know, uh, recent a recent oh, okay. um, so developer what? was just charged five thousand dollars for a tree. It was a town tree, not a not a it private. Was a town tree. Right. Town so, tree. like, so like Kylie Drive, that one's that tree's on the property. Or that tree's on the, the cul-de-sac on town property, and they have to take that down to get access, to get the driveway. Yeah, I, I think that with that one, they're going to move it. There's a dead tree that's already out there, which is not this applicant's problem because it died probably before he took ownership or it wasn't his problem. And they're going to move the tree that's in the driveway to where that one was. Uh -huh. Can you go back to that, that the 5000 that they're asking for that tree? To be, to pay for for its removal. Mm -hmm. Is that the cost of a company coming in and cutting it down? It's just based on uh, caliper. Five thousand dollars just because there's a tree there. Yeah. Well, it, it's it sounds like it's a big tree. It's not. Yeah, it's it, a big it's, tree. Yeah, it can't be. So the guy just took it down. Like cost to remove no, no, he wants to take it down. There's a tree yeah. meet, a tree committee meeting, or a tree. And that's the town's going to charge a meeting. Yeah, yeah. 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 Done it. Well, so, question: Is a town required to be competitive just because they own the tree? I mean, if he could find a private contractor to come in and take the tree down for three grand, would the town not? No, this is that? this is what they're going to charge them to give him the right to take down the tree. So he still has to pay somebody to take so it down? So he's got to pay somebody else to take it down? I don't know the particulars. No, I bet you the but town I, makes it that's down. That's what, yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, uh, yeah that, I have no that, idea. That's talking about double about jeopardy. It. That's. <laughs> I don't think that that, I, it doesn't make sense. I, I only brought that, that up not to talk about this, that <laughs> policy, but to tell you that we're, we're at 250 per tree, capped at $500, and there's some people out there willing you know, developers to spend five grand on a tree because 
it's a problem. And we're hearing a different story when, when they're here. Well, in, uh, not to get off track, but of all the things in the tree policy that I completely disagree with, is it $250 with a $500 cap? If it's $250 a tree and someone wants to take down 10 trees, it's 2500 bucks. That math works all day long. <laughs> and I know why you did it, yeah. but my I point is, that. people want to go cap? crazy for short money. I thought 500 bucks is nothing to clean you a lot of. I thought our cap... It is. You're right. What was our cap on? I thought the cap wasn't... Just residential. It was a residential cap. A resident... And we don't have... Dave. It was Dave you worked on it? Yeah. Harry and Al. Yeah. That's not for a developer that wants to build developer, a new house. No. Come no, in, cap, no. Cut there's down. no cap for a developer. Well, but if a developer owns the property, there's nobody, he's, he's going to pay somebody to take him down and nobody's going to get anything from, from him. No, if they're in the buffer no, zone and he comes to us for Okay, a, well, yeah. uh, assuming they aren't. I, mean, just, I was talking about, yeah, uh, buffer well, zone. And that's what, that's what Becky was just talking about. Until this town has a tree policy for every tree, and there's a lot of ones right. we can't do anything about. Yeah. <laughs> well, but I don't, that's a little draconian for every tree. I mean, I certainly there's some things that are justifiable, but, you know, I mean, people buy property to do what they want with, and I'm not saying that you just raise everything and just screw nature. That's not my point. But it's, at some point, you, you kind of, you draw the line saying, well, you're encumbering people from being people. You know, Some towns do have town-wide tree policies that yeah, apply no right. matter where the tree is located. Yeah. And it's and it sets up, here's what's allowed, here's what's not allowed, here's the cost, here's... Well, but if I own several acres of land... Here's the notification. Land, here's the notification. Sorry. Yeah. Sometimes they have to sure. notify two weeks ahead of time in the market that this tree will be cut, uh, and it's got to sit there notified for two weeks so that if anybody has a good reason why it shouldn't be cut, they can come forward to the, ta the new town and say, I don't want that tree cut, and now the board has to listen to my own town. The inside of town have no, no reason to care other than he just doesn't like trees being I th cut. I think, I think we're, I, we, were, we were looking at one particular lot, and they were in, uh, two of them were in the 25 foot, and a bunch of them were in the 35. And... It was almost like, oh, if they would they just give us five hundred dollars? That's nothing compared to what it's going to take to cut down those trees. And so, why wouldn't they just give you five hundred dollars? It it almost it almost is like an incentive. Well, and you do it after you already cut them down. I mean, because that what are you going to have? It's still five hundred bucks. And now you can't say no because the trees are already down. You can do the mea copas and say, I'll plant something somewhere else and people get what they want. And but I think there's always room for, I think there's always room in that guidance for, to change it, right? The cap. Yeah. I, thought yeah, we, we, I thought we wrote that cap so that it wasn't going to be restrict, really that restrictive. Of There's a, a scenario where we felt like, oh, the cap shouldn't apply here. No. Yeah, it was the developers not to individual property owners. And yet we have to look at another way that, you know, rather than someone going in and wanted, wants to do scorched earth, you know, you have a guy that's, you know, uh, buys, he buys a $700,000 house in Reading to move in with, because he wants his four kids that are under the age of five to get a good education, you know, and he wants to cut the trees that have been growing for 200 years in his backyard. You know, that's not the guy that I want to whack five grand because he wants to clear out his backyard. You know, the, even the $500 charge for someone cutting trees in their backyard is going to might take money out of their grocery money. So that's something that I am... I thought you were going to go like the trees have been there for 500 years. So you, they, <laughs> no, no. I, I thought you were saying that because it was like they're, they're, they're I thought established he was say, themselves. It's a $700,000 no. house. Yeah. The $500 is really just a 0.001% you know, of that. that. <laughs> might be, might be right up against it. And you say, oh, you know, I, I, we want you to pay $5,000 if you want to cut these trees down in your backyard. Um, and that, to me, it's... But the bottom you have to line be is... A, a, aware of that as well. Yep. But the bottom line is we, we've only been losing trees. Right. We've only been losing trees. It's um, not just lost habitat. It's um, lost carbon mm -hmm. sink. It's, you know, overall, um, you know, it's lost evapotranspiration. It's lost, there's, you know. Well, I think, so the, I think the policy from an environmental is standpoint, great because lost. I think it, it's aligned with well, and it can be more aligned with what Bob's saying, what Dave's saying, which is it's your property, but there's a hurdle. You can do what you want, 
you know, with this policy on your property, and we're going to get what we want too, which is another tree planted somewhere else that the town needs. They always need more money to plant trees. That's as I understand it. There's never enough in their policy. We're, I think we're just talking about tweaking what happens in the 35-foot zone because that seemed to be a problem. When is it capped? Is it never capped? You know, is 250 a tree? You know, well, I want okay, to offer, yes. I want to offer a tree gets us another tree in this town. A thousand dollars a tree gets us a tree in Arlington. That's well, something I checked on today because because that's where I live and I know the administrator there. And I called her and I said, "What does it cost if someone took down a tree for the town to plant one?" And they say it's a thousand dollars there because what they do in that town is they hire someone to do it, which doesn't happen here. So it's an outside contractor that has to actually add in uh, watering it for two years. Oh. So those are the they two can. things that they That's, do. Yeah, well, they're sense. assuring that that tree lives. I see, mm -hmm. yep. Well, here's, I'll tell you what, there, there are a couple thoughts here because I, I, I really am a friend of Mother Earth, even though sometimes you might not think so. I think one of the biggest problems we have is people that want to go in there and just cut all the stuff down don't appreciate how valuable a tree is to your points right there. I think a little bit of it, if not more than a little bit of it, is an education problem. And having an impetus for somebody to not cut them down, which could be that money hurdle, doesn't hurt either. However, it's just to get the buy-in from the homeowner to agree that these rules are set in place for the health and well-being of all of us on this life support system called Earth. And these trees are a vital component to our success and blah, 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 blah. People sometimes don't want to hear that, but surprisingly enough, I bet you'd be amazed at how many people don't think of that. Chuck, so how, many, how much money was put into educate? the tree fund last year? About 5,000. One-on-one meetings 5, and talking and bringing it up. And that I don't was, know. Do you, I, I, I don't think do you that, know if that was mostly? I don't think it matters. Maybe for some people, I'm I don't think it matters. Mostly came yeah. from one conversation. Yeah. So yeah. Sorry. Get it right, right. Yep. correctly. Right. So we're gonna. Who's talking? You. Well, Mike's asking a question. Then, if it's us. So about five thousand dollars went into the month into the fund last year. Was that coming? Do you know just offhand from mostly single homeowners? That I would say yes. And was it? Were they mostly? You know, were they hitting the cap and going over it like? Were most people coming in with four trees and they only have to spend five hundred dollars, or? Well, we actually wrote down each tree. I was looking at it today. It was yeah. two to two to four trees was yeah. usually what it was. This was the first one, and that's why I brought it to the commission. The one that we just looked at off of, uh, Libby, where there was twelve trees that were proposed to take down. Well, you know, perhaps we could amend the policy to say, you know, we'll cap a resident at. $500 unless they propose to cut more than four trees if they propose or you know something and if they propose to cut more than four trees it's it's back to per the tree. 250, 250 per tree. tree you know and so there's a built in there that okay you know and maybe four for maybe, two maybe <laughs> maybe, maybe I mean, you written in there now well, I, don't know. I, mean, I, I know and, I know. and you know what we're really talking about the 25 and the 30 we're saying nothing you know these two homeowners actually right. said that right. it would be easier math if it was just 250 a tree you know what are, what are we yeah. getting into because they get all confused about you know if every five is 500 well, why can't i take down 10 for a thousand or so it was like <laughs> yeah, it was, <laughs> well, you know one of the things was, the, the other comment i wanted to make is too bad we couldn't put some teeth in this replanting policy because that I think you mentioned how do we know how many trees that we've charged people for to be planted elsewhere in town have been planted, right? I didn't know. Yeah, it was do we know that any of them have been planted? And this is the problem. No, if somebody's no. going to cut down a tree and they have to replace it with a tree that's going to be planted we know elsewhere. Every single dollar goes to buying trees to plant them. Okay, but are they actually planted or they've been bought? But we don't know the status the of. We don't. Well, it, might, is, it might be in an account, but it's but it, the account is solely to plant trees. I know that they ran out of money. So at the end of last year, probably in September, I was talking to Mike Hannaford, who had done some planting at the Matera cabin, and he said he had at, he had already tapped into what Heath was saying was our 
portion of that tree fund. How many people do you know roughly did we say, okay, this is going to cost you this because we want to plant this tree elsewhere? Do you know, is it five, ten, a hundred? I mean, my question is, if we telling people that we want to plant a tree elsewhere, we're not planting elsewhere, shame on us. So who's who's the enforcement arm of whatever agency says this is the rule and we go get make sure so here, that tree here's is planted? The, what I think is the beauty and the simplicity of our policy. We didn't create the shade tree fund. There's a shade tree fund in the forestry department run by the DPW. Uh -huh. If you give them two hundred and fifty dollars, you can have a tree planted. If you give them two three hundred dollars, you can have a tree planted and your name goes on the plaque outside by the clerk's office. Okay, but when do they put the tree in? Next week, next month, I next don't, year? I don't know. I think I if it, I think if if an individual gave them a check then the, then they would possibly they would probably tell you where the tree is. All right, and I was more concerned about our requirements to replace somebody wants to cut down a tree, say, yep, you have to plant another one somewhere. Do they plant it in their yard somewhere else? Hopefully, if not, do we plant it somewhere else in town for them? Hopefully, but how do we know that's happening? That's my question. The tree fund's not t used for any other purposes. It can't be hijacked for anything else. It's only for trees. So it just means some it might take a couple years, but get planted you know. Well, I guess that was my question. Do we, do we have any clues that if any of those trees have been planted? So when I talked to Bob Keating when he was here, he's retired now, I asked him about the policy. He told me he got $5,000 from the town for buying and purchasing trees. He said it's never enough. They always run out. Oh, okay. Well, so he's doing it. So each year they're going through the 5000 we gave them five thousand in addition to the five thousand they got. So they had ten thousand. So I'm not sure about that. I can find out if you want, and and then tell them, try to figure out what's going on. But we didn't set up the policy that way, and I'm not sure that they're prepared to answer that question. You know, has I mean the funds probably commingled at this time, and you know I don't know if they could take out what we gave them, but they maybe could in the future. You're saying they're, they're not ready to say, this is how much we got from you and how much we spent from you and this is how much we have from the town. It's not a yeah. discreet accounting. Yeah. Or at the end of last year, and we and had two grand left. Money. We can assume yeah. that's our two grand. They use it all up. It's not, then then we know. Know. It's not 9,000. Well, the money's, there's a shot of accounts that says this money's been rat holed or pocketed for this. They specific purpose, right? I'll, I'll I mean, the money's in the big savings well, account. They can't give that that, that $5,000 back, right? That, that they get from the town? They can't give they the can't, general fund back to the general fund. can't give it back fund. to the general fund, right? Because if... if no, 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 it's donated. This, these checks are made out no, 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 to no. the town for the tree fund. So it would, be like, no, no. it would be like telling Anika, hey, give me money to plant a tree, and then I just sneak away with it. They couldn't take that money and do anything else with it. It's oh, earmarked. Sure no, no, Chuck, no, no, Chuck, no, no, no. I'm talking well, about the $5,000 that they get from I'm the I'm not town. putting it in my account and then transferring it to them. They're getting a check from a homeowner to go into the tree, tree fund. So they wouldn't, that's not happening. The, we caused that event to happen, right? Right. We, used, we, we asked them so to do a donation. Why isn't it going into our account? So we, <laughs> we don't have a tree fund. Because we don't have the ability and the means to plant trees. No. So we need to use we, the services of the DPW Forestry but, but Department. But my for point is, and as, we, more as the watchdog chance, then, of the of the my, so I'll meet you down at so and so's address or wherever in the town forest. I well, want to see you plant my tree, kind of thing. That's well, we, I mean, we have to at some level have some level of operational trust that other departments are doing what they're supposed to be doing. It's not our oversight. We're not. It's not our job to oversee DPW. Um, yeah, it seems, like all, it seems like all the questions are going like, how could they, you know, I don't know, get around planting the trees and use it for something else? Why don't I just check? No, and I'm, and I'm not. I'm not that. suggesting there's any sleight of hand going on. I'm just saying. Yeah, it just, I, it just sounds know, like tell people we want to replant trees someplace else. We're going to do it. I mean, I think like it's an honest exactly policy to try to get people to to plant trees in town if they if they're you know environmentally minded, and the policy existed. And you know the flyers are right outside. My five thousand dollar question just comes more from the town budget standpoint. The town gives them five thousand dollars. Does the town have the right to take that back at the end of the year and put that into the, the general fund? 
So I'm not running the to tree fund. Yeah, oh, we're just using it to have them make a donation. We're just saying make a donation to the tree fund, and and it's someone else's tree just fund. We could be saying making right. a donation to the Boys and Girls Club, and then send the check. I'm not over talking to about them. the money that we're sending that way. Yeah, I'm not talking about our five thousand. I'm talking about they get before we ever did this. Yeah. They got five thousand dollars from the town. That I don't know. Uh, that that is separate from the, the tree shade fund. tree okay. fund. All right, all right. Okay. And that's what I didn't understand. Okay, that's what the, I didn't The shade tree fund is a is basically a, a homeowner is writing a check and giving it to the the forestry department and saying that I this it's valuable enough for me to for you to plant a tree. Yeah. And they're obligated to do that because they have that fund fund yeah. set up. Okay. And yeah. it's a funny thing about public domain kind of thing and where these funds work. Money can flow in certain directions, but it cannot go back because it's, it, it, it opens too many ways to hide stuff. So I think once money's out, there's a very tricky process that has to be followed to get it to move back into general fund. So Bob Keating assured me that all the money going in there to, into the shade tree fund is used for planting trees, okay? But what he emphasized is he can't promise they're going to go in the buffer zone or near Welland. Uh, and we agreed that that would be want, fine. Now, that is the only rub on this for us, in my so, opinion. So I guess we just seem to have a lot of out, outlying questions about how that shade tree fund money is used operationally. You know, we have some confidence that it is being used, but where is it used? How is it used? roughly how much of our money I mean if they use the full ten thousand dollars then clearly they've used all the shade tree money that we that our work has generated so we know that but maybe they could give us some idea of, of how often a year do they how many trees do they plant on a typical year um, and we could probably subtract out from that how much of that is the how much of that is the town purchase, the town fund supported, and roughly how much of that in a given year? Sort of like how many permits do we do in a given year? How many notices of intent? But um, I don't think it would hurt to have some working knowledge of how that goes in town so that we as a board know how the money we are generating is getting used. and. Just as a follow-up, I think it's pretty wise to ask that question, no, just, just but I don't think we need to hammer it. Okay, so I'll find out that information, but I'm going to redirect the commission to the original questions, which are... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're, we're discovered that the 35-foot zone is uh, too close to qualify for the policy. So if trees inside the 35-foot zone are no longer part of the policy. What? what? The, the, I thought it was a 25-foot. Well, well, that's what, one of the things that we're talking about is that. Where, is it everything okay still, or is it the 35-foot, or this is one of the questions. And I'm not saying we're going to figure it out tonight. I'm just saying that's one of the questions that we discovered that needs to be talked about. Okay. The amount of trees that are, that are okay to use the policy for, and then when does it actually turn into a, a regular permit, you know, maybe 12 trees is a, is a regular permit. It can't possibly be with the shade tree policy because you guys want to weigh in on that. Um, and then uh, is it capped or is it not capped? And then it sounds like, is there enough, are we charging enough money? So is there a cap or not? We're not capping the, the developers, but they seem, we've never, I, I don't think one developer has ever wrote us a check. No, because when they're doing a house, they have the ability to plant, and as long as they're natives, we might be changing what they're putting around the house, but they they haven't actually had to pay into this. So those are the questions that I see that have come up over the... So this started in November. It hasn't even been a full year, and those are the questions so far. So 35 foot right now is the 25 to 35 foot zone is not included as part of a replacement it, it, No, no, it, it, is, it is now until you change it. It was... It, it, every tree is uh, is uh, is okay to use the policy for. There's well, there wait a minute. The 25. That's a no disturbance. I thought we we don't allow tree cutting in the 25. He's talking about the 35, though. 
within okay no no, no. it's it's if someone presents if if i go out to a house that's all lawn they're within 25 feet and they want to take down a tree and they've got a letter from a arborist, an arborist that it well that's so separate they just want to take it down they can pay for another one if they want to you know there's they can leave the stump they there's three possibilities to get rid of that tree, no matter where it is right now as I see it in the policy. In general, we've, I mean, when this came up, we were approving tree removal inside the 25-foot zone. We were approving it a couple inside the the wetland boundary. Yeah, because you can if have a house deceased, next to it. You know, there's, there was the a house deceased, component to all this. With a danger. Unless, with a letter from an arborist, though, isn't that part of our policy, right? They, they don't have to put in a permit if they just right. get a letter. Right, and I don't think we're, if they're deceased, but we're, I think we're talking about viable trees. We are. We're talking about the good ones. How many How many letters have we seen come in from an arborist saying this one is not in danger? Well, it has to be, it has to be checked. You know, is, there's a couple of, I mean, they come in and they say this is leaning, and I'm not accepting that as, as a they have to right. pick one of the other right. things leave the stump pay for the tree plant another tree on a leaning tree you know so but we are talking about viable trees that they just don't that want are anywhere it could be right up to the edge of the wetland and uh, what currently so I, I guess I, I'm so, so did you have our policy to bring that up what happens to that tree right now as it's written in the in the policy. Sounds like you can cut it down. You can cut it down without a replacement? You either have to do a replacement or a, 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 or a, a don't a, is it 500? 250 per tree, up to 500 for residents. Okay, 250 for a tree. And we have a, there's, we think there's a potential issue because it's viable. Yeah, it's viable, yeah. So its root system, I mean, it provides canopy, habitat, also all those things that we mentioned, you know. I mean, I'm pollution not, uptake from crap that so comes off the lawns. I'm not, I'm not seeing where the 2535, how that come up in the conversation. I must have confused that because in that property on Libby, Libby Ave, mm -hmm. there were two huge Two oaks in the 25 feet and we mm -hmm. said no no we wouldn't let you know we, we don't think we'd allow that and then the rest w was in and there were there were 11 trees all together so two are in the 25 and then the rest well five of them were in 35 i think but some were correct me if i'm wrong i think our tree policy says any tree that within is 100 within 100 feet, feet yep. if it's wetland at 200 feet if it's riverfront is jurisdictional and under our tree policy. So I'm not sure why, if it's within 35, it's certainly with 100, so I, I'm not, I'm because, not. Because that one in particular, <clears throat> it just seemed like it was excessive. It was, and oh. so it was the wholesale cutting of, of healthy, you know, mature trees. It was like this one is, of those. It's still within case. the 100. This right. is, we're, we're trying to go above the policy where they I don't gotcha. have the right to cut it. To be more restrictive at the closer it gets to the wetland. Yeah. Actually, uh, to have a little more say on what happens. I mean, the the policy it can't it can't live outside of the conservation commission. And I think when they saw this come in, you know, I brought it to the commission. The commission wanted to go out and see it, and it was clear that this was this wasn't something that would work. Mm -hmm. Now, in my opinion, when I read this, the commission could say no, and it's not going to work with the policy. Too many trees. Submit an RDA, and that's what that homeowner was faced with. He could have submitted an RDA, find out where he stood, or accepted what the commission said, which was the five trees inside the or outside the 35 foot area, the three trees that are beyond the 100 foot. That's what he can take down. But the even if they stay. did submit the RDA, you still have to have some basis of determining whether you are or aren't going to cut. So I, I don't really see where the RDA is, gen, is germane to. You know, okay. well, that's because when we apply the Wetlands Protection Act, which okay. is something that you, everything is. Right. So, so you've jumped out of kind of a standard, which you can kind of under, you know, you get where you're starting and where you're finishing okay. through the policy. But when you're in the Wetlands Protection Act, we're talking about 
uh, habitat. We're talking about, right. you know, mostly habitat, but, right. but um, so I to shading. There's additional, so we get into the RDA, we're now under the Wetlands Protection Act. Right. I think the other thing is that it just goes before everybody on the commission at that right. point, rather than Right. This is a scenario That's where it's a different thing. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, so we can all make a decision as a group as to just like just like you said, we've been saying all night. Right. right. Every project is different. different. We can sit here and say, does this one meet the standard for the policy? And maybe it's a negative determination, and and it meets it, and we make. But at least we're making it here rather than based on some piece of paper. Right. I, th I think people have have liked it. I think that it's, it's easy. Um, I'm getting a lot of phone calls, and it's getting known. Uh, I think that more uh, tree companies, companies know about it. They're not afraid. This is not going to stop my job. It's right. just a hurdle. So I, for all that, those reasons, it works. <coughs> but, you know, what we're talking about, you know, we, you always have to look. I wanted to bring these things up. Yeah. You know, it, it can remain the same or it can go forward. It sounds like now we've added a different thing. It's going to be... Um, what we have already to discuss, and now at some point, if you're over a certain limit, that you absolutely can't use the policy, and it has to be, it an has RDA. to be an RDA. I think that's, a good, I think it's a good idea that we we set a limit of whether, I don't, and well, whether four trees or six trees that after that come into the, you need to come in, and we all need to look at it, we all need to talk about it, we all need to do a, you know, the, give the option to do everybody does a site visit. That way, it can at least be discussed and. It's not something that's talking about the 100 foot buffer zone, right? Yeah, yeah. Talk, right. yeah, and this is yeah. almost a natural progression Unless of the you're policy. On Pearl Street. That yeah. we yeah. set out a draft policy or a <laughs> starter, and, and we get that feedback, and we see how people are using it, and we can adjust it. So it, there is an abuse of it, and it's not, we're not missing the goal that we set out in the first place. Yeah, the goal was to make it so easy, but make it easy, not but also. Lose yeah, not to lose right. viable, so, trees. viable trees. So, so we're going to get thrown the otherwise. different scenarios, and if we need to adjust the policy, let's do that. There's, there's well, two things that I had, and, and I revisit this when you asked me to go down to Maplewood, mm -hmm. to go down there, and, and two things that came to my mind as I was just sitting and quietly reading this again were there's no uh, real consideration for... I think the um, our real line in the sand about uh, trees that are um, replacement trees for uh, residential properties where there are dead trees or trees that have come down for that. And I think the other thing was when I was reading this, I think the emergency policy and the regular policy say the same thing, the requirement. They do. They the, do. I actually. No differentiation it was so confusing for people. So when I read this the second time, I'm like, if you want to just take a tree down, it doesn't tell you what to do. Right. So I just copy and pasted that and put right. it up top. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that was that was something I had to do because okay. I was just telling him to do that. And okay. Well, let's just put it on. So. Um, you're right. So, so it's. Um, you know when you have. Uh, What's the line in the sand and where do we want to go as a commission for someone that has a dangerous tree? Do you then say to them, okay, yeah, it's a dangerous tree, but if you cut that dangerous tree down, if you don't leave it as a snag, you still have to pay $250 for the tree. So there's no, I, as, as I read this, there's no danger trees anymore, but there's dead trees. Okay. And there's almost dead trees right so the, that's still dead all right okay. so that could be your danger your old danger tree yep so most trees you have to replace right or you have to replant so that that's the one change that this has made okay. but if there's a dead tree then i just say go ahead and take it down i mean I've, I've gone out a couple of times this week where i've gotten a call from a tree company and they said check out these trees we've got yep. flags on them are they dead and I just say, yeah, go and take them down. I don't need any paperwork. And and you don't need to, whether it's commercial or, or, or residential, um, you don't need a replacement tree or, or to donate to we, the tree. We don't policy. have that in our policy, and we haven't done it before when okay. we were having people come in. So I didn't really think we're replacing dead trees. Well, well, dead tree, do you? Yeah, but the thing is, is that it's, it, it was one of the things as I was reading it, it was like, it doesn't really say. I thought, yeah, let's get you reading it because. I'm not know. asking for dead 
for dead trees yeah. to be replanted. So <laughs> we need we need to make sure we're clear. Yeah. So yeah. if you want the the bypass, go out to your tree, dump some gas in <laughs> on it, and <laughs> then come to us three weeks later. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a copper. It's a copper nail. Copper, copper chromate copper sulfate. Nail. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Drill a hole in the oil tree and pull yeah. a little in. And then come to us. <laughs> so I, it, that was the, yeah, the that was the two things the about side. about the dead trees and about the fact that the regular tree policy for cutting it out and the emergency tree policy are the same thing. So yeah, the the emergency policy has really turned into a phone call and a site visit. Okay. Uh, and and then, it's, I try to do it as quickly because it's an emergency. Yeah. You know. Yep. You know. So I, I guess that's another change that that we should do. I mean, I like having the paperwork there because. But I'm usually just getting a phone call. Okay. I think we should change it to an urgency policy. Like urgent care as opposed to emergency care. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a copay? Urgent yeah. action. I have a copay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I don't know what, what the magic number is there. And I, I, again, it's, you know, some lots, if you say it's 12 trees, 12 trees, if you have. You know, a lot that's two acres. You know, that might be only 10% of the trees that are on the entire 12 acres. Uh, another lot you could have is 2,000 square feet, and that's cutting every tree down yeah, in the whole lot. It's 12 acres. That's got to be a subdivision. Two this acres. Time. I you see 12 said acres. 12 acres. No, I meant two There's acres. Sorry. There's nowhere in town that's <laughs> yeah, What are you talking acres? about? <laughs> I thought I you think, said two acres. I think once you yeah. get over a threshold Roll number, if there. it comes before us, at least then we're making a decision right. at the table of this right. is how much we think it should be here. Yep. Uh, and it's not a number that's set on a piece of paper. And, and not not to over encumber this policy with ridiculousness, but there should be a policy that co pretty much covers all scenarios. You know, I mean, it's got to be a population of trees per x square feet of land, and up to this many is you know because it's got to it's got to tie into a percent of the property of the trees in the property, right? You would think. I don't think so. If we set well, the in New Hampshire, you can only cut down 10% of the trees in a lot every five years, I think. And, and I think we, we set the number low enough that if somebody wants to come in and just go to Chuck and say, I've got a tree or two trees or you know three trees, they can get something done without a cumbersome process of having to wait to come to us and for us to just approve it like we always do. Yep. But that if we're dealing with a situation where somebody's trying to, where it's in an in an area that where we think it it's viable to the resource area, or where there's just a whole lot of them that they come in and they do have to talk to us, and then we can apply the same rules to the at the tree policy that were for the smaller amount of trees, or we can say, well, this is a special scenario. This property is different because why, and then make whatever decision we feel like we need to make at that point. Probably. So I'll write this up and then just submit it with the next meeting and we'll just take it a few meetings and see where see where it goes I, I have jurisdictional line 25 35 foot that's one the capping of the money and then over five trees it's an RDA I think that's a good and then something about the emergency stuff yeah. This is, I mean, this is just a template yeah. to work off of do you guys no, I'll, 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 I'll you know I'll well, we could send this to a committee and then have it come back and, uh, you know. I say we discuss it here. Yeah, yeah. We'll make more progress, even even so as too. slow as we make it. I, I can obfuscate simplicity the drop of an issue, so whatever you want to do. <laughs> um, I'm good. I think Chuck should draft something, and, and we'll see it at the next meeting. Edits and send it to us. And, we'll and the only that. other thing that we're going to add, and I'm... I hope this is something. I'd like to try to find a fund where people have a choice to tree fund or uh, conservation. I think it's some great name, but we're going to use it for um, habitat evaluations. Habitat evaluation, scout projects. It, there's probably other things, but then yeah. the only one, the other one I could, if the town wanted to purchase yeah. some land, we would give them this money to, to, to do that. The Conservation yeah. Nature Fund. Sounds good. Land Do you grab. have a name, um, land, Mr. Land grab, uh, land grab? Land grab is us. No. So I, anything that sounds appropriate is fine. I, I, I'll I have to think of that too. Nothing pops into my brain right now. Conservation Commission Fund. There's probably a fund with a name on it already. I bet you. You know the. Well, 
Well, uh, there, well we have to come up with a new fund name. The only thing I would keep the commission out of it, just from the standpoint of this should not be confused with the money that we get for... The state, the half of the state fund? Yeah. Right. This last one has to be run past... No. My is superiors. It, is there yeah. other sure. communities that, that normally will take part of the fees and that wouldn't some of these funds would automatically go into a fund already? In in Boxford and Reading there was a uh, the ability to donate to a fund for anybody. Yeah, you can just voluntary. donate for the fund, yeah. And sometimes people donate I don't know why, but it seems like it grows pretty some people actually donate once a year to, to these funds and there's usually about five grand or so in the one in Arlington, even though we use it. Um, but is and it the legal? problem is we don't have funds. So why we're here is because the the bylaw fees um, we can't use, and the state fees we we can use, but only for certain things. And what I just mentioned aren't some of those things that we can what use if, it for. What if that would go through like town meeting? Would then. If they and they approved it, would it be appropriate at that time? What's that? We use some of those fees. No, no. You can't. can't. No. That's governed the by state, the Commonwealth of Mass. The state fees are governed by the Commonwealth of Mass, and there's guidance on it from my DOR. And the town fees, the bylaw fees, those can't be utilized either. Well, that's what those that's what Kim Kim Heinschlager was here asking us to do right. last week, and. You know, basically, I, what I heard from the commission is that they she feel the like spent. it's appropriate right. that those fees go to the town, and that's that's kind of how I feel too. Yeah, I mean, every department gives what they're not using to the town. I mean, okay. that's that's how it works. Well, it's kind of like budgets that are smashed at the November December timeline because people don't spend their budget. The next year, they get that much less. And then they have a need, and they can't, they can't fund it. So yeah, I mean, it's they can see the juggling and the. Well, this de we're definitely not running a surplus here. Yeah, okay, for sure. Right. Nah. No, I wasn't suggesting that, but it, it's it's. But there's certainly we've had projects come before us. You know, particularly some of the <coughs> Eagle Scout projects where, and I and I understand and recognize that part of the Eagle Scout project process is for them to get the materials and do fundraising and things like that but for some of these kids they're they're really going for the long dollar um, you know it'd be nice to have something that would maybe be able to contribute in some small part to those things that are improving the habitat particularly you know in in and around the town Didn't like when the kid was making the back boxes and things like that I know that we did vote to to give some money but yeah to have that as an option to, um, to do it, it would be nice. Of that. You know, I to do it. You can't, you can't do that. Yeah. So <laughs> that, that came up. That. <laughs> I, I don't know. If that came up at another meeting I was at that was yeah. not in this town, and 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 it was reviewed thoroughly, and it was. I mean, clearly, it says that that's not. What are you allowed to use it for? Administrative stuff. Administrative. So like you could. Uh, it's it uh, the the policy simply says it's to help the town get third party review on projects. So if you were make people pay for third party review, but if if it was a project that you couldn't get it, if you didn't have the expertise in your town, like if we didn't have an engineer, and we needed someone to do engineering, we could pay for that through this fund. You can buy books. You can you can't buy. It, it's just worded like you can't buy normal office stuff, but stuff that you would need outside of that normal stuff you could purchase. The MACC conference. So mostly it's for the administrator. Yeah, the word for that is called slush. That's in the regs. That's, <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. So slush. I, there was one I could, I could email the guidance to you. I'll, I'll email the guidance to you guys. I remember. Through it. All right, well, does anybody want to go watch the Celtics beat the Sixers? No. Um, I, I do. Just, I just want to mention that what I see is one potential place that this fund could be sort of put is perhaps in a variance request. <laughs> you know, when you say to serve a public good, you know, they have to hit those three targets. Um, and a couple of those, we've, we've been struggling over the years to fit, I can't remember exactly which one it is, but, you know, public good and 
this, that, and the other. And usually we've said, well, if it's an improvement of the habitat, it serves a public good, you know, but we could also have something in there to donate to a conservation fund, you know, which will go towards the advancement of the conservation work to better the land in town. So the only thing that I would caution, and, and this is how we got to the shade tree policy in the first place, is that this turns Legality. into yeah, this turns yeah, into I'm, a policy I'm that's just like, oh yeah, just give us some money and yeah, no, you, can, I agree. you can have a variance. It needs to there. be vetted. It needs to be thought through. It was just a spontaneous thought I had about where could we fit it in in our current kind of operational. We were done the whole the town day. Where's the funding for that come from? Usually came out of my pocket, honestly. Yeah, it was it was out of it was, she it was an out of take pocket. That out of her pocket. Well, and oh. and one of the shrubs, one of the button bush we it's got, that was a donation. donation. That was a donation. That was a straight yeah. donation. We just asked the New England Wildflower and Society, and we needed four hours for the materia cabin. Oh. Yeah, and so we we kind of we've been doing donations oh. that haven't cost money, but there was one time it was um. It was a Mass Audubon Society, and they were had membership. And they were having like a sale. It was like fifteen or twenty bucks. And so you know, when it's something like that, and for the sake of um, you know connecting with and making goodwill with the residents, that's nothing. You know? So anyway, ready to administrator's report. Yeah, I had a uh, call from uh, an applicant's consultant, um, well known this commission, Norris Environmental, and we're going to get an application for 5 Dean Road coming up, and they're proposing a, an addition that's 80 feet away from the wetland resource area. There is a pool patio and side of a house in front of it. Typically, we say, um, typically, we're asking for a notice of intent with a full foundation because we get control and we get uh, infiltration out of that. So the applicant's asking to uh, submit it as an, an RDA because of its, its distance. And I already told them that it was a notice of intent. So um, I'm asking again. I thought I would ask because of uh, the first the first hearing in this. In this uh, Tonight, the commission seemed to be uh, different. The, um, I remember. <laughs> tell me something about the grade of the property. Is it a steep slope? No. Flat. It's like uh, right next to the pool, so I think it's pretty flat. Tell me something about the vegetation between the work area and the resource area. Aquatic. Mostly. <laughs> oh, so it's all just. <laughs> Aquatic. Aquatic? Yeah. There's a giant pool it's between. A pool. So. Swimming pool. There's no. <laughs> There's a pool. There's a pond. Yes. Yeah, no, it's a pool. It's not. It's, a pond. it's not jurisdictional. Pond would be nice. It's a real it's pool. It's a real pool. Cement pond. It's a real pool or real something pool. somebody dug. It's a cement yeah. pond. It's a cement pond. Or is it a fishing pond. hole? It's yeah. a cement pond. Yeah, it's twelve thousand square foot drywall. Right. No, there's a. It's a. Um, it's a side of a house. As you're going towards the wetland, for the first. You know, you're going to pass the patio, the pool, and then some open grass, and then it probably starts to slope gently towards. Has any of the property, adjoining properties, been delineated? Um, this one was professionally delineated, uh, so we know it's it's going to be accurate or accurate, you know, within the tolerances that we usually accept. So long ago, was it accepted? So that's. Uh, I, are they my, my hardship because it's in a NOI? Well, they're just saying that. I mean, these are typically submitted as NOIs. They are typically I submitted think. as notices of intent. I think. So what are the, so they're proposing to work on the house and. Eighty feet away. So um, expand the house. Put an addition on an the side addition. of the house, eighty feet away from the well. <coughs> on the side, so. Oh, that's a tough one. Um, We've been asking for notices of intent? We have been. Yeah. I, th I say a notice of intent. Just so we have the teeth for all the excavation and erosion control. And 
Anyone else? Yeah. I would agree. I agree. Okay. Okay. What else? Any minutes? No. No. Um, there is a forest walk, Town Forest, and that's uh, May 15th at 5.30. Um, who is that a deforesting walk? Yes. May yeah, it's deep. They're looking at the red pines to harvest. Calling, calling out the red pines, yep. Mm. Well, they were planted the very close trees. together, and yeah. they want to take. Uh, what I say, one of every one three. One out of three. One out of three out. And they're hoping that trees. the trees pay for the work. So it's, you know, nothing out of their pocket, but it's an opportunity to walk with the forester that originally did the forest plan for the town forest um, several years back. So how do they get? Five to seven years ago. Yeah. So, it's, it, it's, it, so they go into these, you know, there's a, as you walk into the town forest, there's there's a hill, right? So they're going up in the hill and getting those trees out of there, and then. Where are you to walking into it by the compost area? Well, where's the red? No, um, go, by, red pine, go past the. Um, I think you're talking about the Cub Scout circle. No, it's it's even before you get that. You know where the oh, yeah. water treatment plant is. Water's here. That it forks. There's a yellow blaze, and you can go right up. So over that's the by the compost. You walk in past compost. Can I know where the old treatment plant is? No, I prefer than that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm thinking there's another road at the compost that you can go this way, you know, along um, Meadowbrook. But this one, you go down to the water treatment plant, take a right, and where it forks, sure. th there is a ridge there, and there's a yellow blaze. There's a trail that goes right up on the ridge. And there are these... I mean, the trees are all over this area, and and also near the um, the Boy Scout Council. There's some hills as well. Are they proposing to go up and get you know those trees all over the place? I don't. Is that how they're going to pick them up? I don't have a plan. We're going to find out on we're Tuesday. Find out. They would have to. Obviously, they'd have to. If it's in our jurisdictional area, they'd have to, you know, submit a forest cutting plan. We have to approve it. Up on that ridge, mm -hmm. there are these pools. There's like these depressions, and they look like vernal, they could be vernal pools. Mm -hmm. so. All right, so I know that Becky's going, and it, it would be interesting anyone that can get out there. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I can't. You said May 18th? What? 15th. David, why aren't you going? It's a Tuesday at 5 30. You know, the morning pro problem with red no. pines is... No, 5.30 at night. That's the best time to walk out of the forest. A lot of the red morning. pines have hot rot. And there really isn't... It's not a lot of money in those for lumber. It's pines? Yeah, red pines. Red pines. A lot of, an awful lot of them are full of ants and hot rot. And they... Uh, you'd, you'd really need to get a lot of them cut down yeah. a significant size pretty easily in order to make it worthwhile. I guess it's better than having them fall down. Well, I think that they're trying to manage their forest as, you know, the plan was submitted by the same forester, by the way. And they just, uh, it's taken a while, but uh, it's good to take this step and we'll see if it, if it can happen. I think if it costs any money, it's not so going to happen. For millions of years, Mother Nature managed its own forests. So do I assume correctly that this has to do with the fact that the Boy Scouts or somebody planted all these trees years ago? It's, it wasn't are, these the, are these the trees they're talking about? Because you look at those trees, you walk down the road, and they're all die straight. Uh-huh. And row after row after row. A lot of red pines are usually Is that what planted? they're talking about? That's what people think, anyways, that they're, they're straight like that because they were planted. Well, that's the story I was told when it's I was... urban myth, though. Yeah, I don't know. Is that not true? Well, why? I thought there was some town history on that. Yeah, well, that's why. Yeah. That, that's, I don't know. That's what they taught me when I was in Cub Scouts. I just assumed that that's true. If it's not true, it's not true. I mean, well, I don't care. It doesn't matter. Typically, in a water supply, you, you go like past these big reservoirs and you'll see the trees are. You can look right down the well, road. I'll tell you what, the, have, you ever, have you ever walked down there and looked down at Charles? To your plantage protection. Water it's, it's, it's uncanny. I mean, they couldn't have, been, they, they couldn't have grown there naturally. Are, I don't think. Go not that straight. But well, they got that, and they got what do they have? They have the they have the, the nature circles. Lights are lives. 
They have the crop circles. Mm -hmm. They have the, 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 the trees. Straight. The, the, crop the straight are line. Don't try to figure out You know, out CBS has come out with a uh, documentary, I think, next spring about the straight line tree. Phenomenon. CBS? CBS. 60 Minutes? Yeah, 60 Minutes, yeah. I thought it was a frontline special. It'll be after it might the, be. It'll be after the Patriots game. <laughs> you guys, you guys, <laughs> you guys are just it's very dead. <laughs> the straight line tree phenomenon. It's people have talked about it for years. <laughs> is it really? Is it, is it BS? Can I really make a motion to adjourn? I'll second. All those in favor? It's yeah. Oh, I, mean, I never thought about it.